Yo, Hans, man. What's good, bro? How you, bro? You all right? Yeah, shout out to you, bro. Always keeping it real, you know? Keeping the people woke. You know? Might as well add on to that real quick. A little something for you and your, and your um, viewers. You know, since they just been um, keeping it a hundred. Y'all saw, let me ask you something. They be claiming they apes. If they really gorillas did, how come Zimmerman still walking around and ain't none of them get at them? Separation is reparations in this affirmation. Case closed, no investigation. It is what it is, no explanation. Y'all over there praying like y'all done to say. We ain't one of the same. You a film nigga, you a house nigga. Me, I'm a runaway slave. I'd rather be under a grave than under a man that come from a cave. So I'm off to get guns and grenades, but I'll be back in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm on my Django, like Jamie Foxx. Sharp shooter when I aim these shots. They like, here come the pigs. And I'm like, good, cause I came for the cops. I bang on my opposition. Hip hop's been glitching since Pac's been missing. That's why none of y'all got my attention. It's repetition. I ain't gotta listen. Cause I already know what it is. Your flow gonna be flowing like this. Talking about how you're ruling the bins. I know how it's starting. I know how it ends. Wait, ain't you married? How you rap about all the hoes you got? And the clothes you rock with. You need to stop. Cause nigga, those ain't hot. Man, y'all trippin', got these Chinese niggas frying y'all chicken And they don't even look like chicken Fuck around and it's probably a pigeon God forgive them, they don't know no better They probably a Christian, a Muslim, a hoodlum To the system, it's no difference I don't understand it How you blacker than me talking about you in Spanish? Spanish a language, we the same This just your mind's been damaged Where this Nanje? I flip beyond though, I'm from the God yet. They coon it like Kanye, but I'm on that shit they don't teach you in John yet. I'm criminal minded, you can tell I'm a dawn by the women I'm with. I maneuver like Heimlich, but the pressure on the stomach come from my nine and y'all probably ain't catching. So every day, this is a lesson. Go in the church, ain't gon' get you in heaven. Nigga, your rebel's a felony, taking your money and swelling your melon. Me, yeah, I'm a rebel, that's why I'm rebelling. Somebody gotta say it, so I'ma tell them, acknowledge yourself. Since I was 11 and talk my son by the time he was seven. I'm the best man, though I'm not at your wedding I helped them get on, they ain't gotta get credit I'm tipsy, off a nip, see, I'm a hustle Until I get it, I see where y'all going That's not where I'm headed I'm taking a different direction, so no We can't do a record, and just for the record I actually feel disrespected for you even thinking I would be shrinking Down on your level, clown, you a pebble Start to smell what the rock is cooking Cause you heard I set up shop in Brooklyn But it's still weak, X to the death of me They got ingredients, I got the recipe I hope you die in your sleep That goes for all my foes that ever slept on me, niggas, they won't. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you niggas wanna hear. This what the fuck you need to hear. <laughs> Stay woke. Huh? I said, no, no time, time for sleeping. The enemy creeping. And we can't defeat them unless we stay woke. Huh? This is what you need to hear. We got, yo, oh, man. We got a reason to celebrate. It's a celebration tonight. We got a yo, we got a reason. We celebrating tonight. We turning up. Brother Polite, justice was served. Brother Polite gets seven years in jail, even though he should have got the lethal injection. You know, in this world that we live in, when a dog hurts a child, they put that dog to sleep. Night, night. Night, night, look up. Brother Polite should have been put to sleep. They should have hit him in the head with them. But you know what? Shout out to the white man's justice. Shout out to, shout out to the white court system. Because black people failed that little girl. There was warning, warning, warning signs. Remember when Cy Netta? Remember Black News 102, Cy Netta? The conscious community? When he got mad? At Brother Polite? And he told everybody that Polite ran off with an underage girl that was the daughter of his girlfriend. It was his girlfriend. Signed that his wife's cousin. Remember? Right. So everybody knew what time it was with Polite. But they allowed him to keep going on and on and on. And finally, that white court system gave that black girl justice. 
No justice, no peace. Huh? Because our people, you know, we like to say little dumb shit. Like, well, why don't, why they didn't lock up Elvis, but they want to lock up R. Kelly. Elvis was 24. He married a 14-year-old. During those days and time, that was sick, but it was normal. He married that one girl and it was with her for years, right? R. Kelly went for decades and decades with numerous different girls. Elvis had one. R. Kelly had a million. Your love is one in a million. After he got through with Aaliyah, he went and got an arsenal of a bunch of other girls. Even so much that the whole America, you know, black America, was in the barber shops all across America. That tape was playing in the barber shops of R. Kelly urinating on a little girl. And you, you know, us colored people, black people, y'all sat up there and really, 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 really. Made excuses for what he did. And then y'all say out of your mouth. Something that's not needed to be said. If you're going to listen to R. Kelly's music. Listen to it. But when you actually have to make a statement. Put a, a Facebook post. A IG post. And then you sitting up there bragging about. Well I'm still going to listen to R. Kelly. What are you saying to the parents of the victims. When you boldly put that in your title. Huh? Huh? Shout out to that court system for doing what the black community wouldn't do. Where there's smoke, there's fire. This ain't been the first time. I get sick and tired. Y'all people that's watching me, that's on my Instagram that consistently sends me post with J Rashad Jamal. Yeah, we got another one in jail. And y'all talking about the court set him up? No, the courts didn't set him up. The courts didn't set him up. His baby mama. Y'all think this nigga's a guy? He's a god, right? And he always talking about his voodoo. Well, why his voodoo didn't save him? Why, <laughs> why his voodoo didn't save him from the white man from town? Huh? Hit him in the head with the... I'm so happy. Yo, I never... Yo, when I was growing up, I used to always say dumb shit like, I don't never want to see nobody go to jail. No, I'm happy. I'm happy. Jail was made for special people like you, brother polite. <laughs> Hit him in the head with the ah, Dr. Pat. Definitely a time to celebrate. Alhamdulillah, I'm celebrating. I am celebrating. Listen, Woo wee, and yes. Yes, yes, we gonna celebrate. Tears of joy. Hoo-wee. Y'all ready for this? He will be um, listed as victim, Noah, um, in the Zoom. And she's requesting, pursuant to Marcy's law, that her identity remain um, anonymous. So for that reason, she will not be stating her name, but she will be making a statement uh, regarding this. Where would it where would it be? You say victim, and, and then in parentheses, Noah. Nope, sorry. You see a one uh, victim, nope. Okay, yes, one second. All right, you may unmute, ma'am. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Listen up. All right, so what I'd like you to do... Um, is well you don't want to give your name so at this point just go ahead and you can give us a an impact statement yes ma'am thank you 
Michael Nowak, this is the first time I have spoken publicly about what you've done to my daughter and I. I have gracefully remained silent the last two and a half years. Two and a half years of pain, shock, disbelief, PTSD, constant nightmares, and baby triggers. Trying to help my daughter heal when I'm not even healed myself. What you have done to my daughter, myself, and my entire family is inexcusable. You hurt us all. You made me believe that you were such a great man and you could do no wrong. You made me fully trust you, and for that, my daughter trusted you too. But the truth is, you're a monster, a demon. The very first time that I allowed you to be alone with my daughter, the very first time you couldn't even help yourself, you told me you were going to be right back. We are going downstairs. We were going to grab food and take vacation pictures. You told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was and am. And I actually believed you. I believed that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were going to have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. You plotted on me and my little girl. The entire time you knew what you planned to do. Isolate, intoxicate, then violate my baby. Shame on you. I trusted you to bring her right back. You were supposed to bring her back the same way that you took her. Instead, you drugged her and took advantage of her. You sexually abused her. You forced alcohol down her throat. You then forced her to see things that no child should ever have to see. You forced her to feel things that no child should have to feel. You forced her to accept violence that no child should ever have to endure. You forced drugs in her that no human should ever even ingest. She's my child. My baby, how could you? How could you? You could have killed her with all the drugs that were found in her system. Damn. And you thought your master plan was mapped out perfectly, huh? You thought I'd be dumb enough to believe you over my child. And you thought that money would blind me. You thought I was going to be so blinded that I wouldn't notice when you returned her with bruises all over her body and her mouth busted, uncontrollably shaken. Absolutely not. And although you executed your plan and you got what you wanted those couple of hours, you actually failed. Because look where you're at right now. You have created a lifetime of trauma for my daughter and I. Before you, we never knew evil existed. Mm. You brought so much evil into our lives that early morning, and I'll never forget. I called you like 50 times and you wouldn't answer me. And I called her too when you took her phone. You drugged my baby and you gave her no way to seek help. You left me no way to contact her or even know where she was. I get physically sick now whenever I'm away from my daughter because of you. Something as simple as her going to school, I'm in panic mode because I'm scared when she comes back, she's going to be hurt all over again. I constantly have flashbacks of that night. And what she lives with is this, it's not okay. She feels uncomfortable around people and will live with this forever and this is not fair to her. She never deserved this. Shame on you for forcing evil on our youth. And you know, for a year, I questioned, how could you even do this to us? Her and I did nothing wrong to you. We trusted you. I moved across the country because I believed everything that you told me. But it was pure manipulation I see now. All you do is specialize in selling false dreams. How can you do 
do this to an innocent child and mother who's simply trusting you. We did nothing wrong. But you know what? I'm done breaking my head trying to question or figure out how you could do such a thing. It's so simple to me now. You're just a sick man. A man who has, you can have a plethora of women, but you secretly prefer to have a child. And it's so clear now. I will never be able to fully trust another person doing the betrayal that you've shown me. And for that, I was not willing to trust six strangers and go to trial. Nor was I going to put my daughter through an additional trauma. This plea was in our best interest. You and I both know the evidence is extremely substantial. But even with that, I refuse to have my child be tormented when she's done nothing wrong. All she holds is the truth. And I will say this. Although you were so worried about being labeled a sex offender, you did us a huge favor by admitting to guilt, period. So for that, I thank you. I truly thank you. Yes, mitigation took place, and I allowed it as long as it meant you going to prison and you getting true help. Because true help means no more victims. The fact that your only non-negotiable was to accept the sex crime shows exactly the type of man that you are. You know what you did in that hotel room. I know what you did, and my daughter knows what you did. DNA doesn't lie. There's no reason why your DNA should have been found on my baby. And yes, I satisfied your bogus request to not be labeled a sex offender, but it doesn't take away from who you truly are. I wasn't going to waste any time going back and forth with you over a label. God will judge you for exactly the person he knows you to be a sexual predator. So rest assured, jail time equals jail time. And I pray that during your 10 years of sex offender probation, you actually receive the treatment that you need and it helps heal your sick mind and get the thoughts of being with children out of it. All you care about is your pretend image, but I know exactly who you are now. You wanna be this public figure, but you wanna do all your evil acts in secret. You're so self-centered. That's why the last time I saw you on February 27, 2021, you fought me. You tried to hold me hostage from taking my daughter to the hospital. I'll never forget that cowardly look in your eyes. I'll never forget it. You were so scared. You were so scared because you realized you messed with the wrong one. Your last words to me, you held me and said, please don't go. You're gonna ruin my career. Well, today, September 6, 2023, my last words to you are, I hope the next 17 years of your life, you're reminded of the disgusting, terrifying, unforgettable act that you've done to my innocent daughter. Shame on you. And although you've caused a tremendous amount of trauma for myself and my daughter, we will and will always, will always be superior to you because it's Successful, honest career is something that you can never, ever have. We will both continue to stand, stand against. Violence. My daughter will continue to persevere and, and be bright and intelligent and courageous young woman that she is. So Michael Nowak, I hope you enjoy prison and God bless you. Great, thank you, ma'am. You mothers out there, learn from what this mother had to go through. You fathers out there, let it be known. Make your presence felt in your children's life, if you can, possible. Because some of you women out there, once you're not with the man, you isolate that man from his children. And regardless to what you feel about that man, if that man loves his child, he's the first line of defense for that child. This is why you got to keep a bond 
with your baby father, the ones that love their children. Because when you open when you open up the door, sometimes you letting Satan into your bedroom. Some of you females don't even understand that the dude that you're dealing with, he don't have eyes for you. He slid up in your DM so he can slide up in your daughter's panties. This woman said, the first chance, the first time ever, she let her child go. With Brother Polite, he couldn't even wait. Soon as he told her, yo, I'm going to take her. We're going to take some pictures outside. He slid that young girl to another hotel room. Grabbed the liquor bottle and said, shall we begin? The mother's on the phone, calling polite, calling her child, calling polite, calling her child. Where's my baby? She panicking because she could tell in her soul something is not right. She could feel it. That's the animal instinct. That's the, the, the instinct, the instinct, the, the intuition of a mother. He's not answering the phone while the mother's calling. He's in another hotel room, forcing liquor down this little girl's throat. Forcing liquor, forcing liquor, forcing liquor. Left his DNA all in her mouth. Battered and bruised that little girl. Gave her a bunch of drugs. See, this is the thing. What these predators do, they'll invite and entice your child to drink something or smoke something or take something. So now they got a reason to blackmail your child. Mothers out there, keep a line of communication where you always go and tell your mother the truth. When I was growing up, I was scared to, to death to tell my mother the truth because the truth came with an ass whooping. I was scared to death to tell my mother the truth because I had one of those old school mothers that was going to give you an old school ass whooping. And the ass whoopings that she was giving me wasn't normal. Extension cords, handball paddles, pots, pans. The old school telephones, you know the ones that go, you turn, they don't crack that on top of my head. Yeah, it's the shit that I went through. So there was fear. There was no communication. Whatever I had, what I went through, I had to go through. Keep a line of communication with your children. That woman, she can't even let her child go outside out of fear. Every time she look at her child, because of this man, Thank you for your courage. No act um, in the Zoom and she is requesting. Because of this man, every time she look at her child, I failed you. Be careful when you open up the door. Who you giving the keys to? To your, to your heart. When you get into a relationship, it ain't, oh my God, I got a migraine. It ain't just about you. It's about the kids. She let Satan into her world and it ain't never was the same. And y'all don't even understand. Some people, so many people flipped on me. Yo, why you went at Zip with the drip? Because when he said, I gave him this platform, I pushed him on my platform. And when I heard him say out of his mouth that stop calling me unk, oh, 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 all that stuff, because I'm going to be sleeping with the same girls y'all sleeping with. It didn't sit right with me. I didn't flip on him because I was jealous of him. His numbers don't match mine. That's like a nigga with two inches 
going up against nine inches. You're just, you can't size me up. You're too small. You can't. Niggas ain't even get a YouTube plaque yet. It wasn't about that. It was about the principle. Then when I sit back and I look at what I introduced to the internet, I'm embarrassed now because of the things that he said in that situation. Now, there's a possibility that I might have jumped the gun a little bit. Maybe he, maybe he might, maybe he might have said, "Okay, I want, I want to be with the 30." But it, I didn't take it that way because it didn't sound that way. I'm sorry. So I jumped the gun and I said what I said, and I stand on what I said. I stand on what I said. I gotta stand on principle. It's too many R. Kellys out there. It's too many brother polites out there. And the sad part about it is, when you look at this creep, when you look, when you look at this creep, look at the people, OG Shabazz, tag them, tag them. Everybody knew the evidence in the case. They still stood by him, OG Shabazz. How do you respect anything that comes out of OG Shabazz's mouth ever again after he stood up there, took pictures and partied with Polite, knowing what he did? This is the problem in the black community. And that's my problem with Fat Joe. That's my problem. This has been my fight. I had to take a break. He was breaking me down. But tonight, this shit right here, Tears of joy to see that the white court system did what the black community ain't got the balls to do. Because where we come from, coming from where I'm from, I'm from, we divided. It's every man for himself. And in order for us to get somewhere in life, we have to wage war. On ourselves and plunge you out. We gotta get we gotta get deep in the toilet and plunge that shit. We gotta get deep in the toilet with the plunger and plunge that shit. Then we gotta sit up there and flush the toilet so we can have some clean water. Because the reality of it is we let too much shit fly in the black community. We let too much shit go down. I said this before and I'm going to say this again because I want y'all to understand this Nino Brown shit that y'all be doing. Everybody always praising niggas that's coming home from jail. Drug kingpins. The guy fishes. Shout out to him. I'm just using him for example. But let me use you. Shout out to Guy Fisher for an example. Y'all praise these niggas for being drug kingpins. But Guy Fisher's pack that shit, that dope, caught my father at 13 and turned him into a fiend. So now my father strung out. How the hell could he protect me against the Africa Bambada? Shout out to the white man's court system for not telling that young lady, oh, you was 14 years old. You knew what you was doing. You knew better not to go with Brother Polite. You wanted it. Shout out to the white man's court system for not asking that little girl. Did it feel good? Did you like it? Did you come? You know the nigga shit that y'all asked me? The disrespectful shit? The slander? Shout out to that white man's court system for doing what black people don't have the gut to do. Y'all let this man walk the streets freely for two years after he did with that to that baby. Y'all let him go in parties, party like a rock, while that baby had to wake up and go to sleep the nightmares A brother's polite penis all in her mouth, forcefully. Bust her mouth open, forcing his woody woodpecker down her throat. 
And after he did what he did to that little girl, my theory, what I believe, when he gave her all of them drugs that he gave her, he, he forced drugs down her throat. It was only the will of God that that girl lived. He tried to sacrifice that girl. Then when he got that baby back to the hotel room to her mother, grabbed the mother, tried to stop the mother and fight the mother so that the mother wouldn't take the daughter that was dying. She had a lot of drugs in her system. Her little body couldn't take it. The doctors had to bring that baby back. Halfway dead. And y'all partied with the snicker. Why you think I disrespect the music industry the way I disrespect the music industry? Why you think I diss all these rappers? Because there's a door. And that's what's behind that door. Y'all celebrated the 50th years of hip hop. Bam created that. Zulu Nation was behind the Yankee Stadium event. And y'all celebrated it. Posted it all up on the internet trying to antagonize me. It was a money grab. Y'all didn't give a damn about the victims. Nah. Why you think I got a problem? And let me tell you something. Like I said, all them good brothers around Fat Joe, he got some dope brothers around him. Shout out to Miami, dope brother. Shout out to Pistol Pete, dope brother. But I stand on what I stand on when I stand on my principle. When you open up the closet door and you see the ugliness of what these people do and the hurt and the pain that's caused, Well, I, I didn't come here to play any games, man. Oh, I ain't come here to play any games. In fact, Joe, like I said, you owe me an apology, but you ain't got to give it to me. You think you sitting up there giving out them sneakers that this shit going to die down? Nah, you ain't got enough sneakers to give out, nigga. It's going to run out. And on this Internet and all over in the hearts of all of the victims, sooner or later, you're going to have your day just like Bam. See, Bam, you ain't got to kill him. He about 70 years old. He, go, he going to the grave. Allah's wrath is waiting for that fat, nasty, dirty bastard. The wrath of God. I don't have to throw my life away. Don't ask me why I don't go kill him. And leave my children without a father. So when they coming home from school. There's an empty space in their heart. Because daddy's in jail. Nah. This fight, I fought it my way. I made sure I told my story so that he couldn't continue on raiding of a villages. You know, like when he went to Brazil and got locked up in Brazil and the Zulu nation got him out. You know the same Zulu nation that Fat Joe was shouting out? a war going on outside no man is safe from I'm coming back with a vengeance I'm coming back with a vengeance Fat Joe finally speaks on Africa Bambata Fat Joe finally speaks on Africa Bambata All right, you dumbass. going to talk about. There's three founding fathers. Now, Africa Bambada 
has shit like Soul Sonic Force. You know, there would not be no Luke from Miami or no bass music or booty music if it wasn't for everybody sampling Soul Sonic Force, Africa Ben Bottom. Okay? He's beyond a pioneer. Since I met the man, he was always stand up, always a nice guy. I'm not copping out. He was always about inclusion. He was always about if you Asian and you love hip hop, if you white and you love hip hop, if you black and you Latino, is inclusion. They would have these Zulu Nation anniversaries. This is where my brother would go, bring the cassette back, and how I learned about hip hop. Now, because we don't like these people, or we have different things about them, we cannot exclude the history of hip hop music. We cannot change it to our likings. If there's a new, uh, cause I asked my daughter the other day, what's the gender? She said, who gives a fuck about the history of hip hop? Not the younger generation. Nobody gives a fuck, but he's sitting up there trying to plant this seed and use his star power to make you accept the 50th year anniversary in the hip hop museum that's owned by Africa Bambada. So now you two don't want to let me play it. See how the game be rigged? We don't like these people. We have different things about them. We cannot exclude the history of hip hop music. We cannot change it to our likings. If there's a new uh, cause I asked my daughter the other day, what's the gender? She said, dad, there's like 20, 30 genders now. Okay. So as you see, as time is going on and time and the world is progressing and the world is having different views of things, people who have a voice are starting to distort the facts. Now. I've been hearing for the last couple of years, last couple of years, like just before maybe like COVID, that there's rumors that Africa Bambada was, you know, it hurts my heart to even say this. That's why I've never talked about it. But some people are accusing him of being a child pedophile or somebody who used to play with the kids. I wasn't there. Really? I never seen nothing like that. Now, I'm not discrediting anybody who's a victim or anybody who said this really happened and happened to them. I'm not trying to make you think I know and I was in his bed or I was in his room or I was around him to see stuff like that. Me, as a hip-hop fan, I only saw him at hip-hop functions and he was a graceful man. Um... <laughs> And so I heard little rumors like this. It was news to me because I never seen nothing, never heard nothing. And so I just said, let me mind my business and stay out of it because I, if I don't know it, if I can't stay there, if I can't stand there, if I can't see it, I can't really tell you what it is. Now, for the respect of what he did in Zulu Nation and all that, and I can't, I, I won't say, if it is proven that he's a child pedophile, that he's a piece of shit, he should die. It's a fact. I've always told you that, not about him, about anybody who does that. Right? Africa Bambada, his silence, 
This is a man with an army behind him who's disappeared like a thief in the night, who's not on the front line, who wasn't on the front line fighting for himself. What shows guilt with that within itself? Anybody that knows the Zulu nation, anybody that knows old school Bam and the army that he had of killers knows that Bam took the coward way out and let the internet, he used his millions to send niggas like 10 toes down at me. He used his millions when I went to 125th Street to meet up with Sarnetta <coughs> and Ill Mortal Technique. As I'm meeting with Ill, Ill Mortal Technique, Zulu niggas is lining up around the corner. I go to walk by my car, they standing next to my car. Automatically now, I got to pull my flashlight out on 125th Street. Got my Bluetooth in the air, talking to my older brother Jerry. He said, nah, don't do it. Don't set it off there. You're not going to make it off the block. It's 125th Street. It's a thousand cops outside. That's when me and Sinetta beef started. Sinetta lined me up. Years later, Ten Toes Down comes out and reveals that the whole time, he reveals that Sarnetta's his cousin. Can I squash the beef with y'all? Next thing you know, he becomes an internet enemy. Talking about he mad at me because I made a video without him about Mano. Because Mano's a rat. He told on Pretty Black. That was your excuse for attacking me? That's your excuse? For why you sitting up on the internet and keep calling my children retarded? What do my kids do to you, son? Yeah, I got autistic children, but what did they do to you? Why would you want to hurt my babies by disrespecting them like that? That's why I say I swear on everything I love. I don't care who you are, whether it be Uptown or whether it be my nigga Bam. I love you, Bam. Or whether, like I told Bimmy, when I spoke to Bimmy last night, I told Bimmy, whoever I catch, Bam, I catch if I catch Ten Toes Down in Bronx River, like he used Bam to go to Bronx River when he first came home. Do it again. Whoever stands next to you when I catch you is rock a bomb, baby. That's where you put me at. You disrespected my kids for the last time. And you know what? At some point in time, a man got to stand up and say enough is enough. You niggas disrespecting my kid. You disrespecting my kid. If you got beef with me, whatever your beef is, because I don't even know what the beef is, but disrespecting my kids? But let's get back to Fat Joe. I haven't seen him get locked up. I haven't seen him. Uh, and it's not too hard to take a black man to jail for some shit people were saying. It just ain't. Right? So he hasn't got locked up. I haven't seen that. But I heard the rumors of people saying that. Um... So now we got a big problem. We got a hip hop museum that's run by Rocky and uh, the security, everybody, everybody's down. Look, everybody was down with each other. Even Fat Joe was Zulu Nation back in the days. Everybody was down with each other. So a lot of the people that are trying to preserve the culture at the museum are either really, really tight with Bambada or, um, we're very tight with I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about our man. I'm talking about LG. I'm talking about Mickey Benson. I'm talking about... Uh, you talking about Mickey Benson? Let's talk about Mickey Benson. His baby mother, Yolanda. That's a friend of mine. His baby mother, Yolanda, confided in me. Ain't no alleged. That Mickey Benson, well, make a long story short, she ended up pregnant, but she dreamt that Mickey Benson and his wife was running a train on her. Make a long story short, Mickey Benson, he date raped her. He drugged her. He drugged her. Yolanda. The aunt of, 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 um, Little TJ, the aunt of Little TJ, Mickey Benson, 
He drugged her. She passed out. Alcohol pills. Passed out. And that's how she got pregnant by Mickey Benson. That's, so that's who you named? Let's go down the line, Fat Joe. Let's talk about Ahmed. Bear by this manager. See, these are the names he called out. Ahmed. Ahmed is the manager slash roommate. All the little boys that made it up in that building in 1595. Ahmed room is right here. Bam room is right there. Ahmed watched Bam break all them little boys in his room. When I went to jail, I went to jail for murder in 1994. While I was in jail, at some point in time, Ahmed goes in, uh, in the house with, with, with um, Crazy Mike from Bronx River. That's nice with the hands. He goes in the house and... This is what Ahmed told everybody. That the house was smelling like doo-doo. Make a long story short, Bam had little boys in the house. So finally, Ahmed said enough is enough. And he closed that apartment down. That's who you talking about, Fat Joe? LG. The dude that I told everybody, Bam made me as a little boy watch him give LG oral sex. Is that who you talk about, Fat Joe? Come on. Mm -hmm. Even Fat Joe was Zulu Nation back in the days. Everybody was down with each other. So a lot of the people that are trying to preserve the culture at the museum are either really, really tight with Bambada or um, were very tight with him. I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about our man. I'm talking about LG. I'm talking about Mickey Benson. I'm talking about uh, everybody. Fat Joe was there with Zulu Nation. Okay? Everybody. This ain't no K. Uh, this ain't, you know, I'm just saying... Everybody knew each other, right? And, and, and was down with each other, right? So now there's people saying, yo, let's stop the hip hop museum because these guys are cool with Bam Bada. These guys are this and this and this and this and that. Now we got the idea of, all right, do you stop the preserving of the hip hop culture, the hip hop museum that people invested their whole lives into and gave up millions of dollars and went all out. Now, nah, you ain't got to stop it, Fat Joe. But this is the speech that led to me losing my monetization, along with Doggy Diamonds mass flagging me. Along with China Mac mass flagging me. Remember when I was beefing with him and I said, hot sauce ketchup? Yeah, YouTube got me. I got a flag for that. I got a flag because we was going at me and Doggy Diamonds was going at it over over me getting mad at him, fucking with Whack 100, right? And this is what led to that. But shout out to Layla Wills for deciding that if nobody else was going, I, I was tired, burnt out. So she continued on with the torch, and she's the reason why Africa Bambada wasn't celebrated at Yankee Stadium. And this speech right here was the speech to prepare, to prepare the world for Africa Bambada going to Yankee Stadium. Layla Wells and her crew put a stop to that. She hit him in the... So now, instead of Africa Bambada being celebrated for the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, they gave the, the, the accolades where it belonged to Cool Herc. Get it done to make the Bronx a destination across the country to this, this, that, because this man might have did some ugly shit that we haven't proven yet. But because people that are involved with the museum know him or are cool with him or haven't denounced him they're starting to start the 
You know, I'm going to City Hall. I got to complain. I got to this. What will happen is, <laughs> it, what always happens, say they shut the whole shit down. Because these people say, yo, I don't want bad body. It's picture in there. I don't want him this. He did this and this and that. You stop the museum. And this is why whenever people that look like us, speak like us, come from where we come from, try to do something, we shut it down. And so this is very, very, very situation because they're making a lot, a lot of noise out there. And I don't know what noise is because, you know, you know, I told one of my friends the other day, my friend was asking me, you know, relationship advice. And it's like, you know, uh, I'm sensitive. You know, my boyfriend, you know, sometimes he says jokes, but not to hurt me. But I'm just so sensitive, it bothers me. I'm not one of those people that laugh at the joke, especially when it's about me. And I told them, you must have not went on Twitter with me. Because if I go on Twitter right now, I'm a fat fuck. I'm a devil work. Fast forward years later, when you hear about the accusations uh, of Bambada, you know, about the molestation charges and everything else like that, what's your take on it? Well, I mean, it, it's, not, it's not like people didn't know, or, or, or it wasn't like, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't, it's not like it was something that was unknown, in other words, but it was just really? something that was, it was like, you know, maybe hip hop's best kept secret or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. Okay, so you knew, and you think everyone pretty much knew that African Americans. Yeah, it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I mean, you got people that would deny it. You got people that would say they don't know. I'm saying everybody knew it, so it was all right there. So I mean, you know. That's Melly Mel. The legendary Melly Melly Mel, for those of y'all rapper, old school rapper, that if y'all if y'all don't know, now y'all know. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. You didn't know Fat Joe. This is what we gotta stop. You stand next to a predator, you get hit with him. You stand next to a predator, you get hit with him. Hey, when you when you brought up African Bambada, yeah. now now I'm gonna ask you an honest question. Back in the days, what we heard now from Hassan Campbell, B Stinger, these individuals that talk about it, that that suffered from this man, as they said, right? Back in the days, was the, was the rumor about him, was this known back in the days? Was it known at the time? Honestly, yeah. Said, really? I went to James Monroe High School. I just told you that. I was, that's like next to Bronx River Projects. It was always rumored. Just to be honest, man, you know, I'm, 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 I'm you know, I love, I love the Bronx, but I got just, if we keep it in the honey, keep it honey. Yeah, but the, the first the rumors was that, is that he was gay. That was the rumor. And then somebody came and started talking about the other stuff. And it wasn't until um, I was in Bronx River one day with my man, Brian. My people over there, man, I don't want to just throw niggas' names out there. It's a famous situation. But I was with my mans and them out there, and uh, they said some real crude. And I was like, they from there. They from him. And that's when it made me go, oh. There might be some validity to this, you know? 
And uh, the last time I saw a band, man, I was in the state building. I was I went to visit Minister Farrakhan. And Bam was waiting. He was outside getting ready to see the minister too. And it was like a week after that, that shit, the daily newspapers that people was coming out with that. So, no, nah, the rumors was out there. I'm talking about back in the days, not right. like two. Cause it came out 2016 when the rumors started. I was there. hearing this, sh- man. Like yeah, I was hearing. Well, well, yeah. You never. I never. You know. Just to be honest with you, I hate to say it, man. You're guilty of your heroes ignoring shit about your heroes. No, mm. we get the f- out of here. You know what I mean? I was guilty of that. So guilty. even if you heard it, you ignored it. Now y'all see what I'm up against? This is what I'm up against. This is what I'm fighting. This is what this is what I have to deal with. Like star power now. And shout out to Layla Wills. She's in the comment section. Shout out to Layla Wills. Yes, Africa Bambata was R. Kelly before R. Kelly. But we got reason to celebrate tonight. Because Brother Polite, <laughs> he about to get three hots in the cot. Shout out to the white man's justice system for doing their job. I wish I could sit up there and, buy, and, and send presents to the district attorney, to the police officer, to the court clerk, to the judge for locking his ass up. For what he did to that little girl. And if y'all just joined this live, y'all go back to the beginning of this live later on and you can hear the audio of what that mother went through. In order for us to save our kids, there has to be an internal war within the black community. A lot of y'all don't want to deal with the ugly truth. Y'all want to deal with this beautiful lie. The reality of it is. Is that. And shout out to everybody that sent super chat. I was so much in the zone. I I, I didn't acknowledge y'all. Shout out to everybody. And everybody that's watching me. I'm asking with the 5,000 people that's watching. Everybody drop a dollar. In my super chat. Or my cash app. Dollar sign Hassan Campbell. To sponsor this war. Because I got beef right now, and I'm going to keep it all the way funky. This nigga's around Fat Joe. Y'all can call it dry snitching you want. Some of them are cool with me, and some of them ain't. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be when we see each other. Either we're going to have peace, or it's going to be pieces. I'm, I'm, I'm at war with millionaires. And I don't want to smoke with nobody. But Joe owes me an apology. Because if you could get on the internet and stand with a predator, it cost me where well, I could like it's you know it, I, I just thank God that I stacked up enough money to make sure I could pay bills for a rainy day. Nigga, you stopped me from feeding my family in the name of hip hop. Accused me of trying to destroy hip hop to save a predator. This is what I'm dealing with. There has to be an internal war in these streets. Because the drug dealer that y'all praise, that turns the mother into a dope fiend, the father to a crack crackhead, walking zombies, the crack era destroyed us. Dope was so bad when black people started waking up, creating free lunch programs, putting up stop signs so little kids wouldn't get ran over in the ghetto because nobody cared about us. When we started loving each other. And created that 
that red, black, and green movement that came down from Marcus Garvey, where black people started loving on each other. What do they give you? Dope. The CIA flooded the black community with dope. So it gave opportunities for dudes like Africa Bear Bada to sneak and creep right in. Use his stardom. A party people. Can y'all get funky? Hey Zulu Nation, can y'all get funky? Yeah. And the crowd goes wild. After Bam gets off the stage, he go get LL Cool J is hard as hell. Battle everybody, I don't care if you tell. When I'm alone in the room, sometimes I stare at the wall. And in the back of my mind, I hear the conscious call. So now you in the center. In Bronx River, my Zulu brother, shout out to LL Cool J. Bam uses star power now. So now he got the community hypnotized. Ice T walking through Bronx River. Hustler. Word, I pull the trigger long, grit my teeth, spray to every nigga gone. Got my block solo, I'm a dope spot. Last thing I sweat to suck a punk cop. Now Ice T's on stage. Another Zulu brother. Shout out to Ice T. Q tip coming through. Bonita Apple Bomb, you gotta put me on. So now all the children is running to Africa Bambada because not only he is the pioneer of hip hop, but now he got a goddamn big ass Zulu family that everybody's gravitating to. And while he's on the stage performing, the dope boys got their jewelry on, selling dope to your mother. I'm your mother, I'm your daddy, I'm your papa in the alley. I'm your pusher. Constantly selling the drugs to the parents. And while the parents are chasing the drugs that destroyed our community, niggas like Africa Bambada, Niggas like polite. We got to face the reality. Some of these dudes, it's like Zip said. What Zip, what Zip with the drip set was so deep. I might have jumped the gun maybe. But it, it just didn't sound right. Maybe it was my paranoia. Or maybe it was me seeing... What Polite did. So now I'm listening to Zip talk about, don't call me Unc. I'm trying to blend in with you little niggas. So damn. I'm thinking to myself, when I heard Zip with the drip sit up there and say, don't call me Unc, don't call me big homie, because I'm going to be fucking the same girls you fucking. I said, damn. The only niggas that's going to call that nigga big homie and Unc is the niggas that's in their teens. Ain't no 30-year-old calling that nigga big homie. I'm serious about this shit. In the black community, we gonna have to decide. It has to be a war. In order to save ourselves, in order to save ourselves, our community, you gotta get rid of the drug dealers. You gotta get rid of not, I'm not saying all drill rap. I'm saying this and the dead. That has to go. There has to be some principles. There has to be some structure. That we play and we listen to. Can't be a song about a black man killing another black man. Because see, that's another thing. How that song go? Back in the 60s, our brothers and sisters was hanged. How could you gangbang? I never had to run from the Ku Klux Klan, so I shouldn't have to run from a black man. Because it's self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction. You know the song that they didn't play in the 50th year of hip-hop? You know the song that you did not see on Instagram, on Facebook, floating all over the place? You know why? Because that power, that energy being put out by the fathers of hip-hop to the sons might have made the sons say, yo, you know what? 
I ain't going to the studio to make another record dissing the dad. Why they didn't perform that song? A lot of these little girls and little boys that's being touched upon by these grown men, they can't be protected because they daddy dead. Died in these streets. So at some point in time, this gang shit, I solemnly swear by God on everything that I love, I hope half you niggas go back to jail. Shout out to the brothers that's coming home from jail. The guns up, a, a guns down, gloves up. Dudes like that that's out there on the front line trying to make a difference. Shout out to y'all. But you niggas that's on the internet, you the dirty section of YouTube, they got you gotta go. Street niggas don't even want to be in the street. I'm sorry that I influenced you bum ass niggas to want to be on the internet. Go back to the street. Get yo, it's sad now. That you could actually turn on TV and see the level of fucking ignorance that shout out to the 6,000 people in the building. Everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. As soon as they seen that 6,000 in the building, they said, nah, we got to pull this back. That FBI agent that's working my page, <laughs> he fell asleep. It's just mysteriously crazy how they doing the same thing to my Instagram now that they doing to my YouTube. My voice is too powerful. My voice is too powerful. And everybody, everybody that's here to support me, y'all gotta salute yourselves. Cause I ain't shit without y'all. Dirty section of YouTube. I hope you niggas go back to jail. I'm sorry for helping you. I'm sorry for, 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 for trying to give y'all a better life. Y'all niggas is on the internet disgusting. That's why I don't respect none of you dudes. All y'all walking around with y'all act legs. How y'all let a crip come home? Blue boy. In jail from what I'm hearing, he decided to be crip. Just to piss you niggas off to prove that y'all pussy. But y'all shouted this nigga out all over the internet because y'all pussy. But then you disloy, you dirty motherfuckers. Y'all get on the internet, you disloy, you dirty motherfuckers. That's why I was so proud of myself when I threw the blood, the UBN, I threw that shit in the garbage. You know why? Look at it. Look at the OGs. Look at how they treat each other. Look at YouTube right now and how these niggas treat each other. Look at how they treat each other. Look at it. This law, you niggas. This law to your own set. Blue boy left babies in you niggas' mouths. When he turned Crip in jail, he did it deliberately to show you niggas that y'all pussy. He came home, y'all praised him. But then y'all get on the internet and dog each other out. Dogging each other. Who the fuck want to be a part of that? We got to get that shit out of our community. Black people got to take a stand and decide whether we going to be something or we ain't going to either we going to be the shit or you ain't shit. Anything goes in the black community. That's why our children is not protected. Niggas to see a child on Facebook, missing and scroll right past that shit. Once y'all get shot, everybody's supposed to hit the block looking for who did it. Breaking, breaking news. Two-year-old get hit in the stroller. Hit him in the head with the headshot. Who gives a fuck? George Floyd get a knee to his neck. Fitting on Floyd and the whole world decide to go sit up there and tear shit down. Over fitting on Floyd? But not the babies? You niggas went and wilded out over a fiend 
and not the babies. See, it has to be a war within the black community. There's a war going on outside. No man, it has to be. There has to be a war. Our streets gotta be cleaned. We gotta, we like it's it's, it's like we we yo. I keep telling y'all, we scoring points on each other. We scoring points for the enemy. You are in the hood scoring points for the enemy. And the sad part about it is, these niggas, you come in, the, you, you Nino brown ass niggas, come to the hood, sell crack to the baby's mama, and then want to look like the hood hero and sell and give out book bags and turkeys during Thanksgiving. And I'm going to say that shit again. In communities like this, right here, every house where I'm living at right now will call the police on you niggas as soon as you touch the block because they know you poison in the community. We don't want you. But in the hood, anything goes. How the fuck you accept a book bag from a nigga that sold crack to your mama? Y'all don't see how broken the brain is? Huh? You t yo, I can't wait for the day. I gotta buy I, yo one of the movies that I want to write, a book that I'm gonna write. I'm gonna tell y'all. I want to. I'm gonna write a book about the day the crack babies rose up. You little niggas on the block, y'all mad at the world, shooting other niggas that's crying, they in pain just like you. <laughs> Go get the person that hurts you, the nigga that sold mama. Because the drug dealer is the worst type of nigga. He ain't going to give it to his wife. He ain't going to give it to his daughter. Most of them ain't going to give it to their mama. But they're going to give it to your mother and your daddy. Then they're going to come give you a book bag and a turkey. So you can shut the fuck up while they continue to poison. Yeah, let's get to that. No honor. Niggas is on YouTube and don't even have a message. Bunch of dirty, arrogant jailbirds. Go back home. Go back to jail, please. All of you, go back to jail. Y'all got black people looking bad. Grown ass men acting worse than the little kids on the internet. Grown-ass men. Shit terrible. All beefing with each other. And China Brim is one of the worst niggas in the world. The worst. Running around in order for him to get a career on YouTube. You create fake, even though I helped you. By showing you love and pushing your platform. And pushing my audience over there. Made you famous. And you, yo, yo, look at you. Disgusting. You are a fucking embarrassment. Embarrassment. A embarrassment. They don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. Nope, they damn sure don't. Disloyal. All the young kids that's watching me, man, stay out of that gang shit. Them niggas ain't loyal to each other. That blood shit in New York is disgusting. It's disgusting. All these niggas, <laughs> yeah, all these niggas brag about they jail accolades. Y'all supposed to be on the street corner. Y'all gangsters, right? Why y'all on the internet? Because you were sitting at home and seeing Hassan Campbell on this TV screen and you wanted to be like Mike. So y'all all extended, all these niggas that be talking shit about me, reached out to me in a DM. All these gang niggas. Y'all saw my light 
Ya saw my shine. Ya saw my audience. It all reached out to me. I ain't never reached out to none of these niggas. Even Zip reached out to me, praising me. But then the first time you getting beef, talk shit about me being molested. All these niggas reached out to me. Doggy Diamonds reached out to me, even though I didn't make Doggy. Doggy was big. He was already big. He was the shit. And then came her song, Campbell. Oh, you used your story to get famous. No, I didn't use my story to get famous. For the first two years, I didn't even know I could get paid off of YouTube. I was on YouTube talking and ain't even get a dollar. Because I was serious about my people. And when I realized that the music industry in Hollywood was connected to Weinstein, Epstein, and all of the rest of the Dr. Yorks and B Polites, I strategically start ripping apart the music industry and the artists in the industry, every last one of them, because if you went through that door, you are part of the industry and they allowed you in the door, then even you are part, you, you part, you partake in the sicknesses. That's not my words. That's Nori's words. The door, the door, I don't have to keep playing it over and over and maybe I Sit back and analyze the 50th year of hip hop. Who are we celebrating? Russell Simmons? The nigga that's hiding out in another country so that he can't get charges back here? Where the same rumors that was going on with Africa Bambata was going on with him? I have personal friends that Russell Simmons touched at 16 years old. And no, see, we grown men, we don't sit up there and say, you knew what you was doing at 16. We go get our rifles and say, where's he at? He'll never touch another 16-year-old again. When you see people say, oh, you knew what you was doing, well, why you went back? You knew what you was doing, well, why you went back? That's the size of a pedophile. That's, a, that's the brother polite in you. That's the Africa band body in you. Adults don't put kids on trial. Oh, matter of fact, that's the black community. Shout out to the dope ass white people that has no tolerance in that court system for this type of bullshit. Well, black people, you know, we broken. We still got the, the residue of slavery in us. So we blame it on a child for the adults not being adults. That's why certain people get mad at me, but I stand on what I say. If you got the money to get your children out of the hood and you don't, that's child abuse. You couldn't possibly love your children if you have the money to get to get them out and you let them go outside with bullets have no name on it. You let them go outside to the corner stores with the old men like Brother Polite. Mm, when you get a little when you get a little bit older, little girl, you're gonna be mine. To the woman that's watching me. How many women that's watching me right now that had an older dude push up on them and tell them when they got older? How many grown men been hollering at you little girls when you was 13? Talk to me in the comment section. Sending your kids outside to school and they got to walk past the predator. And you know that shit is outside. Sending your kid outside to play in the basketball courts where you can't even play basketball. Kids shot in the nigga got shot in the head in the park. So the kids, they ain't safe upstairs because Brother Polite is, is living in their house. So they can't be safe upset. The only they go outside to the park, they ain't safe there. There's no safe zone for kids in the streets. There's no safe zone. Niggas act like they care. Yeah, let me let's get let's 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 give some book bags out. Let's give some turkeys out. So you're giving turkeys out and book bags out in the hood, right? But why y'all not stopping these little niggas from shooting each other? You gangster, right?
Now I ain't minding my business. When I see people on Facebook put that post up, you know me, I'm just minding my business. And you know what? Every time I see somebody put that post up, you know what I think to myself? What a fucking coward. What a fucking coward. Every time I see somebody put that up and they and they on a post, I think to myself, what a fucking coward. Minding your business? How you minding your business while the hood is going through turmoil? You? Anybody that sell drugs in the hood to your own people, you are committing treason. Niggas running around talking about Bimmy. Oh, Bimmy's a rat. I don't know if Bimmy's a rat or if Bimmy's not a rat, but what I do know is that once you agree to sell drugs in the black community, whether the FBI recruited you or the CIA recruited you, you are doing the government's job. You are you you have you 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 are honorary you are honorary cop you are cop. You are the enemy. You are the slave master. When you become a drug dealer in the black community, you became the drug master. I mean the slave master. You are the new slave master. And your main objective is to fill your pocket with gold at any means necessary, guys. You don't give a fuck if you got a bad batch. You're just going to go back to the connect and get another one and keep on selling and keep on selling. But that's why y'all niggas sat up there mad at Giuliani. Images of Giuliani being arrested. A lot of y'all was laughing. But you want to know the ugly, y'all want the beautiful lie or y'all want the ugly truth? Huh? In the comment section, you want the beautiful lie or you want the ugly truth? If this man right here didn't wage war in the black community, the crime rate would have still been the highest top five in the country. The truth of the matter is that war that he waged when he locked up all them drug kingpins. The truth of the matter is when he actually sent all those FBI's and police through New York City, he cleaned the shit the fuck up. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. Some of y'all dick get hard when y'all talk about back in the days all the bodies was dropping. You know why? Because you got a broke fucking brain. And actually, to actually feel good. Yo, niggas can't come around here. Who the fuck is you, the black Ku Klux Klan? You got sundown towns. When that sun go down, and them crackers catch you in they town, they go hit them in the... Nigga, you going in the woods, they gonna hang you. But then you got nerve enough to tell somebody that came from the same plantations... That you was coming from. The same plantations. Where they sat up there and did your granny. And great granny and great granny. Cut a nigga foot off so he couldn't run. You got nerve enough to tell another black man. That he can't come around your hood. But y'all think that shit is gangster right. That's why I can't fuck with y'all. I'd rather be a weirdo. I'd rather be a bozo than be you soldier boy. Nigga your hearts is sick. The black community is the pandemic. Some of you need the electric chair. You need that good old rope in the woods. Why do black men got to live in fear of other black men? Why do a black man have to contemplate in New York City should he take his gun outside? Matter of fact, if I got to take my gun outside, I'm not even going. Why do a black man have to duck the police in New York City? Why? If they stop and frisk you and they catch you, you going to jail five to ten years 
Because you would fear because another quote unquote real nigga with a red rag in his fucking pocket gonna rock your snot box. Just because somebody so cracked to his mama. Or better yet, because an Africa bambata did him dirty. And he can't tell that. Because nobody in their right mind want to be humiliated the way Hassan Campbell was humiliated all over the internet. And then y'all share them videos and y'all laugh. Got stupid niggas on the internet like Doggy Dom is talking about uh, <laughs> victims don't act like that. Bitch nigga, how the fuck do a victim act? How the fuck you, how, how would you know? You don't, how the fuck would you know how a victim act? Doggy, you talking like you had a dick on your back before. How do you act? You have a grown ass man giving little boys oral sex and a mustache. You ain't even pubic hairs between your goddamn legs. See, when niggas be sitting up there lying about my age, I got $10,000 for anybody that could pull up a video where I said I was 15 years old. That's, that's when Bam started. That I said it started when I was 15. I said it ended then. I got $10,000. Don't switch my words up. How do you act when you a grown ass man? How do you act when a, when, when, when a grown man whiskers, hears, is stabbing your belly because he's sucking you off as a little boy and he's trying to force his mouth on your shit so now all of this is scraping up on your fucking stomach? How the fuck do you act? Bog the fuck out? Bogged out? But we got a night to celebrate. Brother polite, watching my life go <laughs> Oh, my whole, oh, oh, man. I, I, yo, I don't normally wish shit like this, but I hope, I hope brother polite running it, running to KO Smitty. Oh, oh, no, no, dead arm bro. Back in the days, they used to talk about a dude named dead arm bro. He used to knock dudes out and, 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 and pipe them. Yo, I hope Brother Polite get piped down. I hope they pipe him. Now, nah, I, don't, I don't want them to turn this TV off. I want him to have seven years of what he did to that little girl. I want him to have seven years of the same shit that he did to that little girl. And I need y'all to hit that like button. Because if y'all don't, first of all, you two pulling people out of the live. That's for one. For two... Y'all got to understand something. I'll be taking my lives down. The last live I did last night, they was flagging that. They were straight flagging that. These niggas don't want to see me on top. They don't want to see me here. Some of these niggas work for BAM. Nigga got $20 million. You think that some of these people on the internet ain't been paid, ain't been sent through him? All of a sudden, just everybody just keep finding me and flooding the internet and flooding the internet. And flood. My voice is dangerous. Y'all don't even understand. My, oh, most of these motherfuckers is connected. Is a door. You on the other side of that door at war with each other. Poor people killing and fighting poor people. Y'all don't even understand how serious this rabbit hole goes. This shit ain't just start. Let me take y'all back in time. The shit that I had to deal with. The shit that I had to deal with. Because when you have a celebrity or you got somebody like Brother Polite that got a voice, slick talk, got the gift of gab, give you verbal masturbation, we allow these suckers to do anything. I want y'all to listen to this. Some of y'all never, some of y'all never knew all this. Y'all never heard this. I want y'all to live. This shit gonna be a little disturbing. This right here is when I was in the beginning of my fight with Africa Bambata. And Sarnetta, slick, greasy ass, went and sat down with the black spades. 
The Black Spades was a strong gang back in the days. Very, very strong. Shout out to the Spades. Shout out to the Spades that I got love for. I ain't got love for all the Spades. Brother and shit, man. Bam Bada. That's my brother. Kenny, you know what I'm saying? Um, they talk about him and shit, man. Bam. Talk about how and shit, man. He was a homosexual. But homosexuality and shit, man, is American as apple pie. And it ain't against no law and shit, man, to be a homosexual in America. But that's my brother. He didn't want to come out like that because he knows shit, man, this black spade thing and shit, man, about machoism. But that's still my brother. And I told him and shit, man, when they attacked Bam Bada, I told him shit, man, the Zulu Nation and shit, man, to take on the shit, man, and shit, man, a defense. You can't take, you can't call the shit, man, the pot of, the, the kettle black. You understand what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody more wicked and evil and shit, man, than them. So when they attack us, we attack them right back. We tell you about themselves and shit, about them, and how low life and shit, man, they are. You know what I'm saying? We don't let people and shit men attack our people. No, we don't. You know what I'm saying? We are brothers and shit men and we're sisters and we stand up for each other. You know what I'm saying? And everything that you see that's going on and shit is not something that's rooted from a mystery. It's something that's, that's premeditated. What you see going on is premeditated. They went and banned body the same way they went at Bill Cosby. They went and banned body and shit men because banned body and shit men and shit men got people and shit men around us. I got a friend that come from France. You know how I met the person from France? Through the Zulu Nation. Our brothers. You know what I'm saying? And we stand for our people. But if uh, a preponderance of the evidence showed that there was some negative activity, isn't it upon us as kings to step to a king and say this needs to be corrected? Right, right. Yes, sir. But that's our job. Mm. That's our job. That's who do. We, we don't need to sit there. Nobody else checking us. We check ourselves. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Positive equality always see equality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's our brother. If anybody want to check us and shit, we check, we check ourselves. Okay, just one last one. Turn back. So how is that checks to take place? If you can answer that, I want to turn it over to the queen. How, how it? These allegations are true. How do we check the us? Nobody else. How do we check that? We check, we check your shit, man. You check, you tell this shit, man, by telling the brother shit, man, that he has this shit, man, and sometimes back, take back, take a back step and sit down. But we don't let people and shit, man, vilify and shit, man, our people. We don't let shit, man, and shit, man, people and shit, man, who got, who, who are so dirty and shit, man, try to check, try to check us. Ones in. Who are they, man? Who are they, the shit, man, to check us and shit as a, as an organization, as a people? And anything and shit, we gonna do the checking. Exactly. And Queen, you have some words. And then you gotta remember, the Zulu Nation came out of us. Bambada was a baby spade, so he is our offspring. So of course we gonna not defend his behavior, but Bambada did that, not the Zulu Nation. Right, right. So who are you to come into our our home and tell us that this don't belong on our? Do you know how many pedophiles was in the Zulu Nation? Fuck is she talking about? The Zulu Nation sat back and covered up. Bambada used the muscle of the army that he had to intimidate people. If I would have told on Africa Bambada, even when I was at my most dangerous, it wouldn't have got this big. Because the internet wasn't there. So the story wouldn't have got this far. What would have happened was. All of those soldiers that he had. Would have been coming at me. If I would have killed Ben Bada back in the days. Every celebrity. In this country. Who had a crew. Would have had their crew coming at me. My mother would have died. Because this is the power. That that man had. But listen to the words that's coming out of their mouth. On our table. No, 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 no. And when you're talking about taking his life, I can listen. I'm talking about I got experience with this. So um, at, at some point, I believe the same thing that the person should die. I don't believe that today. I believe that the brother needs to go get him some help. If he can, okay. I believe that he shouldn't have access to children, right. and I believe that he need to go. I believe he need as much time as the law would give him. Okay. If they could lose his ass, I'll be good with that. Okay. Okay. You understand That's what right. I'm saying? Right. Yeah. But I don't believe. But I don't believe in no 
no irritated genie or nobody because let me tell you something the zulu nation is worldwide and so is the black space so you're not just gonna come in our house and say what you want to do to our brother who's wrong right, right. who's uh, to me that's not i'm not saying it's a black spade opinion because i'm only one this is what i had to deal with this is what i had to deal with now you listening yeah because the zulu nation is worldwide sorry but i destroyed that talking about what you gonna do i've been fighting this fight for a long time you can't kill everybody. First of all, you can't kill a nigga you can't see. The nigga rich. He bounced from country to country. So all that shit y'all talking about, why you didn't kill him? Nigga bounced from country to country, nigga. Stop acting like this nigga standing out on Harlem. The nigga bounced from country to country. But this woman stood there in front of the TV cameras. And boy, you hear what she's saying? The same thing for you, brother Campy, to those alleged victims, the brothers who very possibly suffered what they have stated publicly. How would you suggest to them towards their healing journey? Well, me, me, me personally, I got my own perception. You know what I'm saying? I know in shit, man, that we and shit, man, that these brothers and shit, man, was all hanging out, man, together. I don't know what kind of lifestyle and shit, man, that they, that they was li li living at the time and shit, man, where, where this alleged shit, man, thing supposed that happened. I don't know if they was all in shit man and shit man all in the crowd living together and shit man as homosexuals. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A man and shit man is innocent until he's proven mm -hmm. a man is innocent until he's proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And when that when, when when he's proven guilty, you know what I'm saying? And through the process, then the shit man, maybe a shit man, I could maybe show show a shit man some kind of sympathy, but I don't know what kind of world and shit man they was all living exactly. together. Exactly. Me personally, mm -hmm. I think it's that they were all the shit man and shit man practicing the shit man homosexuality and shit man together. Okay. That's what I'm thinking personally. And, and, uh, and even with that thought, and I've heard other people share that opinion, the only part of that that brings other things into question is the age factor, meaning if someone is substantially older and a person is technically a minor, yeah. irrespective of what that minor's belief system is, an adult making or having them go into activity, how, how, how does that play out, the age? I came up in shit, man, as a black spade, mm -hmm. and I know a shit, man, in the black spade, Listen up. houses and shit, man. We had a shit man, people with shit, women and shit man and girls and shit man. They was 14 years old and shit man and 13 years face. old and shit man in our clubhouse. And you know what I'm saying? And pussy and shit didn't have no age on it. I'm just being a shit man, honest and shit man and being truthful because I know only thing that gonna set me to my, my brother and us. You know, I mean, period free. The nigga said pussy didn't have no age. And he's about to say they started fucking them period free. Meaning that these niggas in the Black Spade Clubhouse, they were sleeping with little girls before they got their period. Listen to them. I know only thing that gonna set me my, my brother and us, you know, I mean, period free is the truth. When we was a shit man in there, shit man, we wasn't thinking of shit man about no age and all that stuff like that. And I'm sure shit man, when they was up in shit man in that Zulu nation, the shit man clubhouse or wherever they were, was a shit man, the age of shit man, a hiding hole and shit didn't have no, had a shit man no number either. So I think it's shit man that they was all up there shit man practicing that shit, practicing shit man that shit themselves. Yeah. That's where I think, that's me personally. Okay. I might be wrong and shit man, but that's what I think. The nigga said hiney hole didn't have no age. Look at the look at the woman face. Look at their faces in the front. Look at the female's face that's sitting in the front. She can't even believe what she hear. She can't even believe what she hear. Look at her face. This is the world we living in, though. This is the black community. This is why brother polite can get away with the shit that he did. This is why they trying to silence my voice. See, I'm, I'm, I, was I was strategic about a lot of shit. I had to make sure I had longevity. 
So I kept blogging, blogging, going into celebrity gossip, blogging, blogging. Because the reality of it is this war ain't over. Even if Africa Bambada passes away, we dealing with brother polite. There is another brother polite right now. And it's crazy because, yo, Dr. York, anybody that got a tongue, you fall in love with that tongue, y'all let them get to the children. Let me finish this off. Are y'all hearing? And I'm going to upload this video. But not on YouTube. Sign of they ain't striking me. Queen, go ahead. They was, if, if somebody touched a child, they was fucking wrong. And that motherfucker, if that motherfucker was fucking them boys like they say he was, that motherfucker need to be dealt with. You know, and that ain't no, ain't no way he need to be dealt with. I, listen, I invited Poppy here. I invited Poppy here. Poppy is welcome here. Poppy Savage down, welcome here because nobody ain't going to, no, I'm telling you. You can come anywhere the black spades are, and ain't nobody gonna make you feel uncomfortable. And I, I, I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. Ronald or Poppy, nobody will make you feel uncomfortable in the presence of me, as long as I'm here. You hear that? You have a home here, Poppy and Brother brother Sam. They, just like, they were, they were part of the Zulu Nation, was part of our offsprings too. And if they were hurt and damaged, they need love too. And they need love from their fucking family. And how all of a sudden, because their brother molested them, they outside of the fucking family? Hell no. They belong here. I said it before, and I always say it. They belong to us. And I ain't never laid an eye on them in my life, but them are my little brothers. That's true. They, 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 shit man, shit man, all black spades and shit man protect children. You know what I'm saying? But man, this is shit man, something that happened to shit man. Nigga, you just said. Y'all like the little girls, period, free. The nigga said they like the girls, period, free. And Heidi Ho was fair game. Manolo Live and Direct, I sponsored the children, women, and the men had to deal with difficult, the life changes events due to predators, tips. Hats off to the great brother, Hassan. You're not alone. I stand aside with you in this war. Thank you for, thank you for sponsoring this war. Mentally, do y'all understand what I was going through mentally to have to deal? This is what I was dealing with. Ain't that came along with this fight? Mentally? Y'all don't even understand how many friends that I lost because I told the secrets. Do y'all understand? Y'all never see anybody from Bronx River fucking with me. Most of Bronx River don't fuck with me because not because I told a lie. But because Bronx River reputation went in the mud. Bronx River was a legendary project. Like O Block. Now every time Bronx River comes up, the Bambada scandal comes up. And the first thing people ask them, well, why y'all ain't do nothing about that man? The niggas gotta try, change the story and say some stupid shit. Bronx River didn't stand behind me. The truth of the matter is, in this world, and the reason why I played all of this is to show you from what I had to go through. Now, how you think the mother of the victim feel a polite after she had to sit back and watch the whole world take pictures with this nigga that put his pecker in his little baby mouth? How you think the mother felt when she watched you OG Sebas taking pictures with Brother Polite after he put his Woody Woodpecker in that little girl's mouth and left his DNA all in her face? Shoved pills down her throat, tried to poison her in alcohol. And when she ain't dying in that hotel room, he had no choice but to bring her back to her mother, incapacitated. And then tell her mother she couldn't go to the hospital. Grabbed her. No, you're going to ruin my life. I play this shit for a reason.
to man 25 years ago and shit, man. You understand what I'm saying? Bam Bada and shit, man, 25 years ago didn't have no money. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't have a dime. He didn't have a nickel. So you see, man, nobody see man brought that and shit, man forward and shit, man and shit, man when he was broke. But now I'm damn by this shit, man, and shit, man, as part of this shit, man, and shit, man, a nation and shit, man, and then and and and, and set shit, man, to have millions of dollars. Now all of a sudden, shit, man, people bringing things and shit, man, forward and shit, man, about them. What happened 25 years ago and shit, man, when the door was open for him and shit, man, to come and expose the truth? That's what I'm saying. Okay. You know? and, and again, so you're saying the time frame because. So much time has ex has ex expired. That should, in some way, mitigate that these things, if they did take place. I mean, I mean, wrong, wrong and shit, man. And shit, man is wrong. Right. Ain't nobody said if he molested a child and shit, man, then he's wrong. But what I'm saying is, shit, man, he should have been came forward and shit, man, with that. He should have been and shit, man, say that that waiting, shit, man, and shit, man, to, to, to tell him, shit, man, somebody and shit, man, later on, he should have been and shit, man, if he told his mother. His mother should have came forward if he was so much a child and he was abused. This is just me. This yes. is not shit man shit man what I'm talking for everybody. I'm talking about my personal. Y'all notice, look at the video, how he had an army standing next to him. Where did everybody go? The shit that he was saying was so horrible. They didn't stop the nigga. Nobody punched this nigga in his face. Nobody punched him in his face. They walked off and let him continuously say this foul shit out of his mouth. This is the sickness of our community, the black community. That's why when niggas be sitting up there talking about you ain't black, I don't want to be black. Not no more. I don't want to. We have become the most disgusting race on this earth. We have become the most disgusting race on this earth. Anything goes. The nigga Farrakhan got up there and said, Africa Bambada, Eddie Long, and Dr. York is still my brother. Eddie Long was sleeping with the little boys in the church. The pastor. He made the news that came out on him. And the black community didn't do nothing. I don't think y'all understand how deep this rabbit hole goes. Malcolm X lost his life because he told the world that Elijah Muhammad was sleeping with little girls. He realized that there was a black boule and Elijah Muhammad in the nation of Islam was behind it. Malcolm realized, well, he might not have realized just how deep this rabbit hole went. The door? All these niggas is connected. Notice how everybody in the entertainment in, in, in the entertainment world bow down to Farrakhan for what? Them niggas killed your greatest hero. Malcolm X died. Because he spoke out against Elijah Muhammad for getting all them young girls pregnant. But then y'all sit up there and y'all praise Fa Farrakhan is one of the dopest speakers ever. Because he was taught by Malcolm. But he's foul. R. Kelly is still my brother. What? Take the what and lift the what? The most beautiful things in this world is is surrounded by the hellfire. Here, yeah, let me do you a favor. Boom. You look at this video. Everybody you've seen in this video. Like, look how everything connects. This rabbit hole, oh, yo, this rabbit hole goes even deeper. 
no perception. Okay. Okay. And I won't let nobody in Shimon and Shimon put my brother down and Shimon like that. Because I don't know what they was practicing and shit, man. Okay, and clearly you're speaking for, for yourself. And that was one of the things that was the most disturbing as the story unfold. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, we knew. Oh, yeah, we knew. Or they said that was the norm. So, again, as Queen mentioned earlier, we did have several failings along our way towards organization, along our way towards forming the organization. And I, I, I'm listening to what you say about the length of time and that there possibly might be some material gain, but these gentlemen have been on record saying they want nothing materially. All they want, and they've even said, if they want him to get help. And they just, they just you know, they... If he did it, but they, if a man is shit, I can't even listen to no more of that nigga. Y'all get the picture, right? Y'all get the picture. What did Polite do? Oh, y'all missed out in the beginning? mother and and she will be um listed as victim noah um in the zoo and she is requesting pursuant to marcy's law that her identity remain um anonymous so for that reason she will not be stating her name but she will be making a statement uh regarding this where would it where would it you be? should say victim and, and then in parentheses noah nope sorry you see a when it's uh, victim nope okay yes one second all right, you may unmute, ma'am. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. All right, so what I'd like you to do um, is, well, you don't want to give your name. So at this point, just go ahead and you can give us a an impact statement. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Michael Nowak. This is the first time I have spoken publicly up. about what you've done to my daughter and I. I have gracefully remained silent the last two and a half years. Two and a half years of pain, shock, disbelief, PTSD, constant nightmares, and daily triggers. Trying to help my daughter heal when I'm not even healed myself. What you have done to my daughter, myself, and my entire family is inexcusable. You hurt us all. You made me believe that you were such a great man and you could do no wrong. You made me fully trust you, and for that, my daughter trusted you too. But the truth is, you're a monster. Monster. A demon. Demon. The very first time that I allowed you to be alone with my daughter. The very first time you couldn't even help yourself. You told me you were going to be right back. You were going downstairs. You were going to grab food and take vacation pictures. You told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was in and in. I actually believed you. Believe. I believed that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were going to have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. You plotted on me and my little girl. The entire time you knew what you planned to do. 
isolate, intoxicate, then violate my baby. Shame on you. I trusted you to bring her right back. You were supposed to bring her back the same way that you took her. Instead, you drugged her and took advantage of her. You sexually abused her. You forced alcohol down her throat. You then forced her to see things that no child should ever have to see. You forced her to feel things that no child should have to feel. You forced her to accept violence that no child should ever have to endure. You forced drugs in her that no human should ever even ingest. She's my child, my baby, how could you, how could you? You could have killed her with all the drugs that were found in her system. Damn. And you thought your master plan was mapped out perfectly, huh? Master. You thought I'd be dumb enough to believe you over my child. Nope. And you thought that money would blind me. Yep. You thought I was going to be so blinded that I wouldn't notice when you returned her with bruises all over her body and her mouth busted uncontrollably shaking, absolutely not. And although you executed your plan and you got what you wanted those couple of hours, you actually failed. Cause look where you're at right now. Boss. You have created a lifetime of trauma for my daughter and I. Before you, we never knew evil existed. You brought so much evil into our lives that early morning. And I'll never forget. I called you like 50 times and you wouldn't answer me. And I called her too when you took her phone. You drove my baby and you gave her no way to seek help. You left me no way to contact her or even know where she was. I get physically sick now whenever I'm away from my daughter because of you. Something as simple as her going to school, I'm in panic mode. Because I'm scared when she comes back, she's going to be hurt all over again. I constantly have flashbacks of that night. And what she lives with is this it's not okay. She feels uncomfortable around people and will live with this forever. And this is not fair to her. She never deserved this. Shame on you for forcing evil on our youth. And you know, for a year, I questioned how could you even do this to us? Her and I did nothing wrong to you. We trusted you. I've moved across the country because I believed everything that you told me. But it was pure manipulation I see now. All you do is specialize in selling false dreams. <laughs> How can you do this to an innocent child and mother who simply trusted you? We did nothing wrong. But you know what? I'm done breaking my head trying to question or figure out how you could do such a thing. It's so simple to me now. You're just a sick man. A man who have you can have a plethora of women, but you secretly prefer to have a child. And it's so clear now. I will never be able to fully trust another person doing the betrayal that you've shown me. And for that, I was not willing to trust six strangers and go to trial. Nor was I going to put my daughter through an additional trauma. This plea was in our best interest. You and I both know the evidence is extremely substantial. But even with that, I refuse to have my child be tormented when she's done nothing wrong. All she holds is the truth. And I will say this. Although you were so worried about being labeled a sex offender, you did us a huge favor by admitting to guilt, period. So for that, I thank you. I truly thank you. Yes. Mitigation took place, and I allowed it as long as it meant you going to prison and you getting true help. Because true help means no more victims. The fact that your only non-negotiable was to accept the sex crime shows exactly the type of man that you are. You know what you did in that hotel room. I know what you did, and my daughter knows what you did. DNA doesn't lie. There's no reason why your DNA should have been found on my baby. And yes, I satisfied your bogus request to not be labeled a sex offender, but it doesn't take away from who you truly are. I wasn't going to waste any time going back and forth with you over a label. God will judge you for exactly the person he knows you to be, a sexual predator. 
So rest assured, jail time equals jail time. And I pray that during your 10 years of sex offender probation, you actually receive the treatment that you need and it helps heal your sick mind and get the thoughts of being with children out of it. All you care about is your pretend image, but I know exactly who you are now. You want to be this public figure, but you want to do all your evil acts in secret. You're so self-centered. That's why the last time I saw you on February 27, 2021, you fought me. You tried to hold me hostage from taking my daughter to the hospital. I'll never forget that cowardly look in your eyes. I'll never forget it. You were so scared. You were so scared because you realized you messed with the wrong one. Your last words to me, you held me and said, please don't go. You're going to ruin my career. Well, today, September 6, 2023, my last words to you are, I hope the next 17 years of your life, you're reminded of the disgusting, terrifying, unforgettable act that you've done to my innocent daughter. Shame on you. And although you've caused a tremendous amount of trauma for myself and my daughter, we will and will always, will always be superior to you because a successful, honest career is something that you can never, ever have. We will both continue to stand, stand against violence. My daughter will continue to persevere and, and be bright and intelligent and courageous young woman that she is. So Michael Nowak, I hope you enjoy prison and God bless you. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for your courage for speaking. It, it is heartbreaking and my heart goes out to you. It's mother and, and she will be um, listed as <laughs> we should be popping a bottle right now. Some of these comments are so disgusting to you people making jokes about this will have to answer to the almighty on judgment day. Y'all got to understand son, right? Do you know how many child molesters, how many predators is watching this live right now? in fear of my voice because there's a child somewhere sitting on the opposite side of this tv that's actually sitting up there contemplating or telling on a nasty bastard in their family that touched them so a lot of niggas that you see not feeling me they ain't feeling me because they them i watched a movie back in the days called eight millimeter and in the movie the shit was scary because there was a child predator in there. Like, but he was one of them dudes that was kidnapping children and killing them. And he said in the end of the movie, he said, you know what the problem is? That y'all don't realize there's more of us predators than it is of you sane people. There's more insane people than it is sane. And see, y'all don't understand. Right in front of y'all faces, y'all got groups like NAMBLA. The National Association of Boys, Men, Lovers. You have grown men out there, gay men, who are trying to change the laws and make it legal to have sex with children. Do y'all understand the battle? What we like? Y'all don't even understand how how deep this rabbit hole goes. So we have created the People's Fund of Maui that will put money directly in the hands of the people who need it right now. So if you send a donation, just click where you see below and send a donation. That money is going to go to one of many residents who have been displaced in Maui. We guarantee. That's right. I know a lot of people out there, as Oprah and I have been finding, are just uh, having a hard time trusting 
where the money goes, what organization should I send money to, how can I help. Uh, in this case, the fund that we created with a lot of hard work from a lot of hardworking people yeah. who all care about these people of, of Maui, uh, as Oprah was saying, it is a clean, direct, from you, directly to their hands, and right away with some real immediacy, because as we're finding, as you guys around the world know, with disasters like this, the number one need is money. Is money. Is money. In hand. And so we have created... This rabbit hole is about to get deep. Hit the like button, man. Hit this like button. I'm about to get real deep on Oprah real quick. Real, real deep. Images of Oprah Winfrey with Weinstein. Do y'all know that Oprah Winfrey used to hang out on Epstein's Island? Images of Oprah with her life coach. I forget the dude's name right now. Her life coach, right? Her life coach is in jail. It's a child rapist. You are the company that you keep. 2,000 children are missing from Hawaii. 2,000 children, as the fires burned, they used the police to isolate and lock people in. 2,000 children disappeared on the same island that Oprah's at. Y'all don't understand what's going on? You got 2,000 children missing. And Oprah becomes the face of the island, asking for $10 million, but she's a billionaire. You got 2,000 children that are missing. And they keep this fucking celebrity gossip shit and all this stupid shit all over the internet. How do you... I think I want to be white. I'm going to start bleaching my skin. Frequencies. If you put a metal fork in there, it sparks and explodes. But if you put broccoli in there, it heats it up. The difference is the material it's made of. You cannot put metals in a microwave. High frequency device. Now let's talk about this direct energy weapon. That's a high frequency device. Melting all the metals, leaving trees behind. Hmm. Sounds like they're using microwave technology and it's affecting metals. Well, imagine if you had a bunch of metals in your body. Heavy metals, like barium, aluminum. You know, the stuff they spray in the air or the stuff they put in water, even in food. And the you know what? Long story short, we need to eliminate metals in our body. Imagine if they turn that up higher, level two. The more metals you have in your body, the higher the chances of you exploding, melting like those cars, catching on fire, sparking like the fork in the microwave. You need to detox from heavy metals right now. Here's another video on this recently about a movie I watched. They use frequencies to disintegrate people. This isn't a movie, folks. We're test subjects. I saw a video about the people in Hawaii that were jumping in the ocean because their skin was burning. It wasn't burning because of the fire. It was from the frequencies coming from whatever it is they hit it with. They were cooking. Water in their body was cooking. And if they had a lot of metal in there, or if the frequency was higher, people would be just like those cars, disintegrated. Far-fetched? Not anymore. I use frequencies to detox. I use mineral salts. Cilantro under the tongue. Onions on the bottom of your foot. Rebounding on a trampoline. Stop eating crap. How was... Frequencies. You put them... Do y'all understand how deep the rabbit hole goes? There's levels to this shit. When you watch TV, as we was growing up, right? Jason. Friday the 13th. What was the theme? A psychopath. Who goes to the woods 
and kills teenagers. Michael Myers, a psychopath with powers who goes out in camping areas on Halloween and kill children having sex. Most of the teenagers are having sex and he kills them. Uh, nightmares on Elm Street. A child rapist who was set on fire. He became an eternal monster who comes to teenagers in their dreams and kill them. He loves the virgins. Y'all niggas don't even understand how Hollywood be fucking telling on themselves. There's a door and behind that door is evil. The door behind that door awaits you with evil. Did you listen to what this woman said? She's basically breaking down from the people of Hawaii. How lasers, frequencies, like a microwave had the people feeling like their skin was cooking so they jumped in the ocean. The island was surrounded. The towns were surrounded. People couldn't get in or out. But 2,000 children is missing. The sad part about it is we don't know if those children was incinerated by the hottest fire you've ever seen. Fire is so hot that it melted cars into the ground. Or was there a pipeline leading back to Epstein's Island? Do you really, really believe that Epstein is dead? Just mysteriously, he hung himself in a jail? That billionaire just hung himself? Did we see the body? There's levels to this shit. Fire is hot, highs, I don't know. Well, you have to go do your homework and you have to see. You have to listen to the people. You have to see what was done there. Regular fires don't burn. Melt cars into, into the concrete. I've, I've seen plenty of car accidents where cars was burnt to a crisp. It didn't melt the car into the cement. I don't even understand how deep this rabbit hole goes. Drags Oprah for being friends with Harvey Weinstein and Russell Simmons, who have been also faced essay allegations. She said, I am glad more are seeing the ugly truth of at Oprah. I wish she was real, but she isn't. From being pals with Weinstein to abandoning and destroying Russell Simmons' victims, she is about supporting a sick power structure for personal gain. She is as fake as they come. Now, there's been rumors for years that Oprah used to pick a lot of Jeffrey Epstein's victims for him. In fact, there was a time when the police allegedly raided her house in Florida in connection to a sex trafficking operation bus. Before the fire started, Oprah Winfrey hired private firefighters to protect her land. Not Oprah and The Rock banding together. They trying to collect $10 million in donations like they ain't got it. She can't even protect the children at her school. An all-girls academy grades 8 through 12 in South Africa. 
Just months after the school was hit with its first sex scandal, seven students were suspended for sexually harassing their schoolmates. One 15-year-old prayed another student and urged her victims to lie to investigators about what happened. Allegedly, girls were intimidating the others who partake in inappropriate behaviors. In the first year, a female member of the school staff was accused of physically and sexually abusing students, arrested after several girls made statements. Oprah settled the lawsuit before the trial began. Parents were complaining about only being able to visit their children once a month. And the girls were only allowed to use their cell phones on weekends. The body of a newborn baby was found in a plastic bag at Oprah's school. Let's not forget about her good friend, John of God, who abused over 600 women, kept teenagers as slaves, and sold their babies. And his own daughter said she was abused by him. Another good friend of hers, Harvey Weinstein, all them flights she made to that island, ruined her relationship with Monique, bringing her brother on this show to talk about what he did to her when she was young, ruined her friendship with Janet, messing with Michael's kids when he passed. Shut up. Y'all see how deep this rabbit hole goes? Y'all see how go he he going where? Epstein ain't going. He's not dead. You think the billionaires that could, yo understand something, man? Those billionaires own the courts. They own the police. They own the prison system. You think that they let that man die inside that jail? No. They got books, computers, tapes. With the shit that went on on Epstein Island. They got a bunch of celebrities. There's a list of celebrities that participated in that island. None of them in jail. You don't even hear about the people that was on Epstein's Island anymore. It's quiet. You have footage on the web. Leaked footage on the web of Hillary Clinton being on Epstein's Island. Peeling the face off of a child. I saw it. Some of this shit was on the internet. They're taking it down. Somebody on the dark web was leaking this shit on the internet and the internet is taking it down. Hillary Clinton. Do you understand how deep the rabbit hole goes? Y'all better wake up and stop playing, man. If that shit happened in Hawaii, which is part of America, it can happen where we at. Y'all don't even understand how deep this rabbit hole goes. Do y'all realize Hawaii? Like, let me tell y'all something, man. All of these smart cities that they starting to build, this ain't just something that's going on in America. In Saudi Arabia, they building a smart city. Akon already started with, with the China, with, with, with Chinese, with the Chinese over in Africa, building smart cities. In these smart cities, you cannot drive. Cars are banned. You will be enslaved. But you will choose to be enslaved. Because when they get finished. Wiping out communities. With HARP. With earthquakes. With Project Blue Beam. With CERN. These niggas got the power of God. They microwave a whole island. Where the rich wasn't even touched. The rich wasn't even touched. The motherfucking firewood was biased. That's why I be telling y'all thank you for sponsoring this war. Y'all better take care of me. How long you think they gonna keep me around on this platform waking y'all up to this kind of shit? Don't nobody really give a fuck about no 1090 Jake. I was the first one to air the nigga out on the internet and you know what y'all did? Started flipping on me because y'all love Bubba, yeah, Bubba Sparks, a.k.a. the white blood. Y'all love to see a white man on top of black culture. Y'all loved it. Y'all loved it. 
You second. Y'all 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 lose it in your own culture. Adam twenty two on top. Vlad on top. Every like oh, they're on top of your shit. I don't give a fuck about ten ninety Jake snitching. I don't care about that. I don't care about ten ninety Jake snitching in jail. He told in, yeah in, in certain jails they would tear him up for that. He's he's cooperating. I don't care. You should care about white people don't let black people get in their business. White people do not like black people come and talk about their people like that. The Jewish community do not let you talk about nobody in the Jewish community. But you, soldier boy, y'all let 1090 Jake get on the internet and talk about your people and drag your people. Everybody protect their own but you. You got black bloods protecting him, making excuses for him. Cause y'all love your massa. Massa? They love him. I don't care about him snitching. That's ignorant shit. Sometimes I gotta dumb myself down to talk to you dumb motherfuckers on an elementary school level. Cause all y'all care about stupid shit. Who the fuck give a fuck about that fat boy snitching? Who cares? You do. Oh, this nigga Hassan Campbell, he bugging. Yeah, I put him in the title so you stupid ass niggas could come listen to this real shit that's going on. Give a fuck about no 1090 Jake. I don't give a fuck about no 1090 Jake. But you do. Who cares? You're still going to watch him. You're still going to watch him sit up there and drag your brothers in your community and don't talk up. Yo, this nigga didn't have nothing to say about the, the, the battle rapper that died, Pat Stay. He ain't talk about that. He's capitalizing off of your people. His people not going to let you do that. And if you do do it, they're not going to sit up there front row and center and watch your videos while you sitting up there, while, while, while you sit up there making their people look bad. They're not going to do it. The Jewish community, if you disrespect them and say something negative about them, they're going to take your platform. They're not having it. They protect their own people. But you, you sit up there and let Santa Claus, almighty Jake, sit up there and drag the shit out of your people. Because y'all ain't shit. Niggas don't have no loyalty to each other. Like I said, you sit up there, you go to the dirty section of YouTube, where all, where, 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 where all them blugs, all it's too many of them dusty. Yo, look at how they treat each other. 050, oh, the movement. Look at how them niggas treat each other. It's disgusting. But Blue Boy? And I say it again. When Blue Boy became blood, I mean Crip, he became Crip because that was his way of saying, y'all niggas is pussy, do something to me. And y'all didn't do nothing to him. Then he comes home, you rolls out the red carpet and praises that man all over the internet while y'all disrespecting your own kind, your own bloods. Niggas is disgusting. And then y'all got nerve enough to be sitting up there watching that clown ass nigga and them clowns, all of them. Listen to their conversation, what they talk about. Ew. I'm surprised some of you niggas even get sex. Who's sleeping with you niggas? Look at the mentality. Every time I sit back and I think about Nori talking about that door, I don't know if it's homo or a sacrifice. Let's go down the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole of sacrifice. What the hell is that?
That's a weird looking mosquito. Should look like a demon. Let me find out they don't let that shit out outside. Got that helicopter over my house with them crazy ass mosquitoes that they letting out. If there's a door, and behind that door, this shit never gets old with me. I don't give a damn how y'all feel, boy. It's a level of success where it's a door. It's a door. Never gets old. When you platinum and you're getting 50000 a show, I've been there. There's a door that you can walk in. I'm not sure if it's homo or if it's Illuminati. I just didn't take that, though. I went straight. What do you, what do you mean? Listen, listen, listen. When you, get to, when you get to a level of success, when you're getting 30, 40, 50000 a show, you platinum, you're running across the world. There's, a, there's three different doors, right? There's three different ways to walk. There's to the left. There's to the right. And then there's straight. To, straight is your own, your own. Let's see if you continue this success, young man. Okay. Let's see if, if it's all about your skills, young man. Let's really see that. Okay. You went straight. To the right. I'm not sure if that's the homo shit right there. And then there's to the left, I'm not sure if there's some sacrifice shit going on right there. I'm not sure because I went straight. But I was offered these doors. It's just you were offered I, I, some, some gay shit? I don't, no, 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 no. I, I'm saying that to the right when I seen it, those, those was those guys over there. You know what I'm saying? Those were those, those, those different people, which I have no problem with. You know, that's, that's y'all. You feel me? And I just chose to go straight. And I haven't been platinum since. <laughs> it's a level of success. Frequencies. Rose drags Oprah for being friends with Harvey Weinstein and Russell Simmons, who have been also faced essay allegations. She said, I am glad more are seeing the ugly truth of at Oprah. I wish she was real, but she isn't. From being pals with Weinstein to abandoning and destroying Russell Simmons' victims, she is about supporting a sick power structure for personal gain. She is as fake as they come. Now, there's been rumors for years that Oprah used to pick a lot of Jeffrey Epstein's victims for him. In fact, there was a time when the police allegedly raided her house in Florida in connection to a sex trafficking operation. There's a door. There's levels to the shit. And as you go through those doors, and you keep going through doors, the level of of sickness behind those doors, you can only imagine. Bill Gates has gov gov let a bunch of GMOs, mosquitoes in Florida, and Cali loose. Is what I heard. Of course he did. He told you. These people sit up there and tell you, on their platforms, that they got to reduce the population. They're telling you all over the world, or all over these stages, these TVs. They're telling you they're going to reduce the population. And then they make you line up in front of their doctors like guinea pigs and you stupid asses do it. The same nigga that's sitting up there telling you to go see the doctor is on the stage telling you that he's going to reduce the population so they can have more control over their slaves. You, soldier boy, slavery never ended. They just expanded the plantation to the world. Y'all don't even understand the evil that's about to hit this earth. You are living in revelations. And I know you don't believe in the Bible, but the Bible believes in you, my nigga. 
Because whoever wrote that book was giving you a warning. Warning, warning, warning. You about to see some shit like you ain't never seen. But you so sleep in this matrix, you are not Neil. You are not Morpheus. You the one that didn't take the pill. You still watching TV looking stupid while Agent Smith is running, running around looking for Neo in the Matrix trying to catch her song Cardboard. I'm running from that nigga till I get my powers up. Because the reality of it is for you to see what happened to the people in Hawaii and you not mentally being prepared saying, okay, so they did this to the people of Hawaii now. We all understand that is there's a, that's going to be the first smart city. So out with the old and with the new. So now in certain areas, wherever they want to start building a smart cities at, somehow, some way, there's going to be a so-called natural disaster that's going to remove you from the area that they want to claim, like Central Park. You know, black people own Central Park. So they eradicated them and turned into a park and took their land. Because they can't have people, they can't have a black Wall Street. Where you control the banks. Because then it gives you power to come to the table and negotiate. This world don't need another rapper. Especially not another gangster rapper. This world don't need another rapper. It's just crazy how we get ready to go to a, an election. And the candidate is Biden, who's sick, twisted, and evil, and Donald Trump. Who's right now actually out on bail. And the game is so rigged that we so broken as a people. This is our opportunity to form a third party. Power to the people. And take over. Or try to. But we're not even coming to the table. We don't even have our own candidate. Y'all too busy looking at, looking at Fat Joe. Lean back. Lean back, lean back. Y'all too busy watching the 50th anniversary of Ben Bada's hip hop. There's a war going on outside, no man is safe from. Well, there's a hit list and Hawaii just got hit. Who's next? I sat back and listened to different governments, different countries, Blame America for the earthquake that happened in Haiti. Google it. Welcome to the New World Order, kid. That's where we at right now. Out of chaos comes order. Look up at the skies. Do you imagine, yo, could you imagine the shit that you about to see, what you about to feel? You about to see shit in the sky like you ain't never seen before. You about to feel earthquakes. Welcome to Revelations. Like you ain't never seen because you got to understand something, right? There's a reason why most of us people is about the coastline. So all they have to do is shake the earth, make the ocean comes in, wash away. Because remember, when you fold that, when you fill, when you fold that money up, on one side, you can see the planes hitting the towers. But then when you look at the other side, you can see the tidal waves coming up and washing away New York City. New York City, it's over. Y'all don't even understand what's going on. Hawaii is a blueprint to what they're about to do next. This, this whole game been a chess game, man. Muammar Gaddafi. Had so much gold, he was about to get rid of the American dollar. He started that. He wanted to beat the Illuminati to the punch. Y'all beat the y'all don't y'all don't understand, right? These governments is not at war with each other. There's no such thing as a government. There's no such things. These are puppets. The world is being ran by the elite. They're not going to let you vote away power just mysteriously all over Saudi Arabia, Africa, Hawaii. Now, all smart cities is coming. What does these smart cities 
mean to you? When you look at when you look at the the the, the um how they put in the um what's it in the Georgia Godstones that they was gonna reduce the world's population down to ten percent. That means if there's ten people in a room, they're gonna leave one man standing. Are you mentally prepared for that? Bill Gates just created labs where he could give you synthetic chicken, right? So now he got these labs where he's going to control the meats. Meanwhile, all of these farmers' lands mysteriously caught on fire and millions of chickens and cows is dying. So the animal life, the real animal life, is going extinct. Nigga, don't get you a Benz. Go get you some farmland. You could live in a tent. You could even live in your car. But what are you going to do without food? These niggas is trying to sell you crickets. Crickets? Crickets? They're trying to replace meats with crickets because they're killing off the animal population. And we allowing them to because we're too busy worrying about what's going on with Blueface and Krishan. Everything has been done in plain sight for years. These seals of the Bible are opening up, unfolding right before our eyes. However, many won't see the destruction coming. Judas Radio, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. YouTube ain't nothing without you. Thank you, Monty. Appreciate you. Rashida Terry, thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. 4,700 people in this goddamn in, 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 in the building, man. Hit that like button and drop a dollar in my super chat. You got 4,000 people in there. 4,000 people drop a dollar or we can sponsor this war. We need to get us some land, but I'm afraid. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm afraid because my whole thing is right. Like I, I got to be real. Every time we try to build something, see, in Black Wall Street, right, the Gap Band, I said this before, I'm going to say this again. They dropped the bomb on me, baby. I used to think that the bomb was a female giving a man some pussy. I, that's I thought of the, I thought the dudes that were saying it was talking about the female. The female. No, these niggas was talking about how the helicopters, the government used helicopters to drop bombs on them to wipe out Black Wall Street. So now we know we got to figure this shit out. Curtis, thank you for sponsoring this war. We have to figure this shit out because if we don't, how we how, how do we survive? An enemy that'll wipe your land out through water, through fire, through earthquakes, through famine. COVID-19 has a patent on it. That means that COVID-19 has is owned by a scientist. It was created. It's owned by a scientist. There's a pat there's a pattern on it. Do you understand what that means? Have the T, thank you for sponsoring this war. Y'all don't understand that you are living in the signs of times. You don't have to believe in the Bible, but whoever wrote that book is talking to you right now. And the stuff that it told you that was going to happen is slowly happening right in front of your face. Oh, that religious stuff. Religious was, con was controlled to, to, to divide you, nigga. You should be in your Bible right now and in your Quran right now trying to figure out, okay, what they going to hit us with next because it told you. It told you. And it even told you in some of these scriptures the signs of the times. Like in Islam, it tells you one of the major signs of the times is that you won't be able to tell a man from a female. So instead of you sitting up there trying to debunk whether religion is real or not, 
to sit back and, and, and analyze those books and understand and be strategic and try to figure out a plan so that we can survive this nightmare that's about to come to us. While Hawaii was being destroyed by wildfires, in the Bronx we were celebrating the 50th year of hip-hop. Everybody in the world was supposed to turn around and look at Hawaii like, what's going on? Curious, trying to figure out what's going on, but you're not. And that's what scares me. All about business. Thank you, family, for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. Please do research on the people Epstein worship. The Ka the Khazarians gods, his power was tied to the um, the Mossad and CIA. Both passengers and the Khazars crossed the um, the leaving Ukraine six six A.D. Charles Harris, thank you for sponsoring this war family. Appreciate you, Chris Niels. How's did you hear? If an EMP happens, it would take nine months or ninety percent of the population to die off. Buy land, build a house, and snap out of the matrix. These governments are telling, first of all, America is telling you that Russia is going to hit us with an EMP. America is telling you that. You know why America is telling you that? Because they already agreed. All of these governments are not really at war with each other. They are at war with the population. And there's something special about the American Negro. I mean, Rod, thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, family. There is something special about the American Negro that they keep their foot in our neck. There's a reason why they hid our history, children of Adam. There's something that they don't want you to know about yourself. That's why they keep you with the dirtiest music, the filthiest foods, the, the, the most corrupted neighborhoods. These motherfuckers, they hit you with everything but the kitchen sink. Africans come to America, they don't hang out with you. When those Africans come to America, they are taught before they get over here and they get whatever visas and whatever money our government gives them. For there is something special about us. That they do everything in their power to keep us down. Everything that's depicted on TV is evil. You think they made Bill Cosby the number one father in America? Without him going through books, Bill Cosby head got too big. So they're not going to never lock him up for what he did behind their doors because that's a code. But when you break the law and they set traps, that's why I'm not the nigga that you, you bitches going to be in my DM. <laughs> Sit up there trying to get me to the hotel like, what the fuck I look like? I'm stupid. So I'm going to go just lay up with one of y'all chicks I met on the internet, right? Like, ah, I'm sure you got a fatty. She bad. Next thing you know, 10 years from now, her son, a big fucking star, or whatever I am. Next thing you know, yo, this nigga going to jail. This girl got allegations. That girl got, nope. Nah, not I. Not me. Not Wanda Campbell, son. Paul Taylor, God bless over 20 something something just ain't right thank you us from the war family appreciate you y'all better understand something man everything that you see on tv look at the shows that they push on us you sit up there and you watch those low budget black movies every movie is a nigga selling drugs Robin, a nigga selling drugs. Robin, look at the mentality. Like, damn, you motherfuckers can't even be creative? It's 
all the same stupid shit. Niggas go in the studio. Yeah, you rap niggas. Y'all all sound the same. It's the same shit. Different toilets. Like, damn. You niggas can't be creative? It kind of make you miss groups like Das Effects. Even with Tribe Called Quest, it kind of make you miss niggas like, like Q-Tip, Tribe Called Quest, Brand Nubian, One for All, Brand Nubian. Because they had a different style. All you niggas is the same. Shoot them up, bang, bang. Shoot them up, bang, bang. Nigga, if you feel like that, that every song that you write, you got to shoot them up, bang, bang. Go outside and shoot something. Fuck it. Go to jail. I mean, that's your mentality, right? Go to the studio. I killed this nigga. Killed that nigga. Well, go ahead. Go outside and hit something. Then maybe after you hit something, maybe you stop writing that shit so fucking much. Who you selling that to? I keep telling y'all. I grew up in hip-hop, first family of hip-hop, grew up in the home of hip-hop, the Bronx, grew up in the, in, 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 in the projects where hip-hop was birthed, outside of Cedric, it was Bronx River. So yeah, I listen to music from time to time, but the truth of the matter is I'm getting sick of that shit. Because as you elevate and you get close to the grave, you try to go to the spiritual, the spiritual realm with your light shining. When you go back to the darkness, in the essence, you want your light to shine. And stop sending me Jamal Rashad shit where he's speaking and saying the same shit that I was saying that he stole from me and Young Pharaoh. Don't send me that. Don't send me that pedophile. Please don't send me nothing from that pedophile. Young Pharaoh got drugged out, lost his fucking mind, and here come the rise of Jamal Rashad. Jamal Rashad Jamal, whatever you call that nigga, stealing my shit, stealing Young Pharaoh's shit. With a little bit of Dr. York and y'all praising this nigga that's in jail for touching his own king. Fuck out of here. There's a reason why they put, they're trying to put my lights out. Shadow banning me. Tweaking out my YouTube page. Nigga, if you knew like I knew, you know the boogeyman is everywhere. There's levels to the boogeyman. Brother Polite, a low-level nigga. If you ask me, I think Polite was about to pay, but he was personally trying so hard to get in with the Illuminati. I think he was going to kill that little girl. And it didn't go the way that he wanted to because he was smart. He... I, I just, I, uh, the pills didn't work. His plan didn't go the way they did. It's levels to this shit. It gets deep on the totem pole. Danielle Davis, thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, family. Yeah, my dog is loud. I told her not to bring that snoring ass dog back in the house. I think about it all the time. Like, what do we do? At some point in time, we gotta fit. We gotta take a stand. Because believe you, when they turn when they turn them frequencies on, these people create yo. They they got technology that can make your heart stop. When y'all look at YouTube, start doing research now. Stop watching them niggas in the dirty section that's keeping your brain filthy. Educate yourself on this technology. They got stuff that if they wanted to. While you out there riding, they got frequencies 
that make you feel like you can't breathe. It suffocates the air around you. They use frequencies. Look it up. It's on YouTube. They show you. Ooh, like it just hit me. It was like, like damn. Wake up. Wake up. If you think that these people going to let you just vote and take their power back, you're stupid. Every day, the clock is ticking. Tick, tock, tock, tick, tick, tock. You are moving closer to man-made doomsday. You are moving closer to man-made, man's made apocalypse. Every day, hold your children tight. Every year, millions of children is disappearing. I know I'm off subject, but what about Dojo Cat Demon video? Keep being positive, highs. North Mullins, Mississippi. Shout out to Mississippi. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Dojo Cat is showing you the door. Those are one of the doors that she went through. We all know in the industry they worship the Baphomet. When you listen to the stories of the Bible, you got to understand something. That these so-called fallen angels or the shaitan, the jinn, is at war with mankind. You are dealing with witchcraft. Spells being cast. You're dealing with the unseen, the jinn. Like when you watch the movie with Denzel. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. You fight in the seen, in the unseen. That's why when I pray, I ask the lost upon what the Allah to protect me from the stuff that I see and the stuff that I don't see. That's why you got to keep the angels camped, camped around you. Take the what and leave the what? And when you hear them dudes on YouTube say that, they got it from me. Oh, man, everybody acting like they don't watch me, man. Still, Yo, it be making me sick how niggas be stealing my shit. Stealing my shit. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, yo, I'm gonna say it again, cause I gotta make y'all understand, right? Good morning, good morning. Study your circle before they hurt you. When I say study your circle, I'm somebody study the people that you be around, cause you gotta understand as you grow in life, as you become older, as you become more disciplined, as you become more mature, you keep the, you know, you keep stepping up, but everybody's not stepping up with you, and sometimes that can hurt you. Because you'll be holding on to something that won't let go, that's not going nowhere. So you, you know, you just keep feeling pulling somebody, somebody pulling your shirt. You keep feeling somebody pulling your shirt. So you got to study that. And a lot of times you got to understand, you know how you be trying to push somebody, you be trying to push, 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 but they just won't move. And you're trying to figure out, we got to be mindful. Just because we want something for somebody else, that's why I say study, study your circle. Just because we want something for somebody else, that don't mean they want that for themselves. You might be looking at somebody like, yo, I'm trying to push him to be Michael Jordan. I want him to be Michael Jordan. They just want to play in the playground. They just want to be a star in the ghetto. Everybody don't want to go to the next level. You keep saying, damn, why do they keep going back? Going? Like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get them better training, trying to take them to the next level, trying to, you know, introduce them to new heights. And you're like, damn, they just want to play in the playground. They don't want to go. They don't, they don't want to even advance. They don't want to take the game to the next level. They don't want to go to the, the collegiate level. They don't want to go to the league. They just want to play because they just love the attention and it's comfortable. And they're afraid of the next level. So you got to study your circle before they hurt you because you'll be holding on. Now, I know a lot of y'all Gillian Wallow's nuts. Study your circle before they... No, it's pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. And yeah, Jadakiss said that, not Beanie Siegel. Jadakiss said that over 25 years, 20, 25 years ago. But you ain't hear nobody say that but me. Jadakiss said it in the song 20 years ago, before Beanie said it. Jadakiss said it. But it's always been my style. And no, 
You didn't get that from Shada. When he said on Shada, he said, take the weed and leave the money. I said, take the what and leave the what? I switched it up. That's my shit, my nigga. He said, take the weed and leave the money. That's my style. The difference between me and Gillian Wallow. Gillian Wallow is never going to sit up here and talk to y'all about Project Blue Bean. They're never going to tell you. They, they're never going to tell you, yo, there's holograms where they can make you see Jesus. They're never going to tell you that this Project Blue Bean is so powerful that they could telepathically speak to you directly in your brain and make you hear the voice of God. They're never going to sit up there and tell you when you look at the skies. Never. Show me where you've ever heard Gillian Wallow actually try to wake you up to the CIA and FBI. Show me where you've ever heard Gillian Wallow talking to you about Project CERN. Where they created a portal. Where they opening up portals. Tell me where you've ever seen Gillian Wallow talking to you about Stargates. Have you ever heard them break down to you how we was infiltrated so bad? We used to say, fight the power. Fight the power. Fight the power. So what did they do? Use NWA to push and promote California gang life. Jay-Z was the blueprint to selling drugs. He was like the movie Scarface that all the rappers wanted to talk about selling drugs. Look at the era, how they took us. What, what, look how they broke us down. So nobody wanted to be the revolutionary no more. That shit wasn't cool. Now everybody gangbangers. Jim Jones. Why y'all think I came at Jim Jones so hard? Jim Jones was the blueprint for post pistol kind of like brought like brought brought an energy to the streets that little bit of time that he came home when he bailed out he turned he painted the town red grant that but I'm telling y'all when you seen dip 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 was my my reply that shit with Jim Jones he was a billboard for gang banging on the East Coast. Jim Jones. Now the crazy part about it is, right? Tax Stone, one of the charges that they got Tax Stone on, the feds, was using his videos to promote and recruit gang members. So how the fuck they charge Tax Stone with that and not Jim Jones? Nobody has, pro nobody has promoted gang life, gang activity more than Jim Jones on the East Coast. Nobody. He was the epitome of blood. They used black celebrities to destroy the integrity of black people. Who the fuck want to be the bus driver? He broke and struggling. Who the fuck want to be the janitor? He broke and struggling. Who wants to be the sanitation worker? Nope, everybody wants to be the rapper. Half these rappers is broke. But what they do, they give them a whip and a chain. Now you looking at him like he iced out or he got the nice girl in the video. Little you, you know half these niggas is fucking broke. They just started paying these young drill rappers. They started paying them because these niggas came through the door with a blood sacrifice. They didn't have to go through the door. They came through killing niggas. Then went to the studio, rapped about it. Then went back outside, killed another nigga. Now the nigga that they beefing with killed one of they niggas. And now all over YouTube, all over Spotify, they selling murder, death, kill on a black man. And guess who buying it? Oh, you don't have to buy it no more. All you got to do is stream it. Nobody buys music any fucking more. You stream this shit. 
They give you fake sales. So now they pay our children to kill each other. But the feds ain't going after these corporations because it's death by design to keep us in the lowest of the lowest of the lowest fucking state. Because if we got to survive each other every day, living in piss and shit in our elevators, if we got to survive each other every day, that means that we can never focus on the higher ups. We can never focus on the people behind the door. The door, the fucking door. We so low, we so we so down, so low at the bottom of the barrel that we can't even stop our kids from killing each other. Teach your kids not to kill my kids. I already taught my kids not to kill your kids. It's simple. We on the elementary school level. And the crazy part about it is, as soon as you wake up and you defeat one level of life and you get to the next level, there's going to be an even harder obstacle. The obstacles ain't going nowhere. What you think are going, let me, let me ask you a question. Do you really, really think the people in power and everybody black say, you know what? We're going to let these people have America. If all of us decided today that we was going to Africa, we're going to play this Dr. Umar bullshit and go back to Africa, right? Do you think they're going to let us? That fucking mosquito was crazy. You think this, you, you, do you really, really think that this colonizer it's going to let all of us pick up and just leave? Why do you think they, they created child support? There's not even enough jobs to supply everybody in a black community. It's not even enough jobs. So now you in debt with child support. Boom. They revoke your driver's license. Boom. They revoke your passport. So now when you sit up there like, I'm out the country, I'm gone. No, you're not. Who the fuck even invented a passport? How you allow somebody to create a passport that when you got to ask them for permission to go in the ocean? They created police to catch you traveling in the ocean. You got to get permission to go in the, in the ocean. Who the fuck gave them the right to tell you that you can't just create your own spaceship and go in the air? That's how they control the game. You got to get their permission to go in the ocean? You got to go have a permit. On God's green earth, you got to have a permit to certain places to go fishing. You got to get their fucking permission to go fishing. Do you understand that that's death by design? Now, the sharks in the ocean don't ask the government, could they eat the fish? But you got to get a permit to go fishing and, and so you can feed yourself when this earth is supposed to be free. You got to get a permit and get permission during deer season to hunt a fucking deer. And then they give you, they tell you how much you can take and how much you can't take. Do you understand that that's death by design? They created bills. They created bills where that. If you catch rainwater, you can be arrested for catching your own rainwater. Do you understand how evil these people are? Do you understand under the Patriot, you will never hear Gillian Wallow talking like this. They talk to y'all like y'all little children. Pay attention. <laughs> uh, study your circle before they hurt you. Fuck. Fuck is you talking about? What are you talking about? When I say pay attention to your circle before they hurt you, I'm making you understand that you in the hood where niggas is hungry. And even the niggas that ain't hungry, it ain't even about the money no more. It's about the like, the share, subscribe. The fucking trap. 
What's that song? Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making his list. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. Like, share, subscribe. Facebook. The first trap. Okay, so now you got these niggas over here talking about power to the people. They on the list. Motherfucker, when they start turning up and they start eliminating motherfuckers, you think they ain't gonna come what you come from you niggas that's like sharing and subscribing, that's waking people up? They don't want the dumb. They want the people that that, that com com comply. The sheep, they want the sheep. But you niggas that's liking and sharing and subscribing to Hassan Campbell, motherfucker, you're on that list. They don't want free thinkers. They tell you how evil they are in movies. They got move. They show you in certain movies. I forget the name of the movie where they was actually sitting up there reading people dreams. And if you dream certain things in your dream, they killed you. Because you fell up under the umbrella of the people that they didn't want in a new world. They're telling you what they are. Shut up. Damn it. This world is a prison for the people of God. Even more of a, pe a prison for the poor. The poor got to survive the poor and the poor got to survive the rich. They make sure you go through so much hell on this earth. Once you get to the certain age, you get sick in the hospital. People don't even fight no more to live. Motherfuckers is like, I'm tired. Most people feel like they're tired. There's a lot of people that feel like they don't even want to go on no more. But they ain't got no choice. I don't want to live no more. Sometimes I hear death knocking at my fucking door. I'm living every day like a hustle. Another drug to juggle. Another day, another struggle. Biggie said that over 30 years ago. Sometimes I hear death knocking at my front door. Living every day like a hustle, another drug to juggle, another day, another struggle. Death by design. Niggas ain't talking about the people that create evil. Who created the conditions that you living in. You got to work till you die. If you get sick, you can't pay your mortgage. That's why when I sit up there and I tell y'all the 4,500 people in the building, drop a dollar in my comment section, understand something. The shit that I'm saying on this video, now these motherfuckers that be mass flagging me, when they go to YouTube and say I just said this, I said that, or whatever, this video, maybe something in here they don't like. The next thing you know, my YouTube is down again and y'all never get another nigga like me. Y'all stuck with them niggas in the dirty section of YouTube. And then these niggas running around thinking that they the shit. All them niggas over there just alike. Oh, the whole dirty section, all them niggas is alike. And every last one of them using my slogans and my styles to get hot. But don't talk about shit worth talking about. And a bunch of them niggas is in here, not even writing in the comment section. They got they... They got their ghosts. Matter of fact, make sure y'all subscribe to my Snapbox TV. Let me see something. Y'all run it up. That's me right there. And Snotbox.
Yo, it's amazing how I'm actually writing in my comment section and I'm talking to y'all as I'm writing in my comment section on, from, from, from Snapbox TV, but it's not popping up in my comment section in the screen in front of my face. How is that possible? I'm sitting here writing from my Snapbox TV into my comment section and it's not popping up on the screen. Explain that. Stupid motherfucker gonna tell me to stop lying when y'all sitting up here and y'all watching me. So I'm a lot of y'all. I'm trying to get y'all to subscribe to my new channel where all my pre-recorders is gonna be, right? But it's not going through. It's not going through. Wow. Amazing. So I'm just curious. How many other people was actually writing in my comment section and actually watching right now and they not showing us the numbers? This shadow ban shit is crazy. Wow. There we go. So when I actually sit down and I tell y'all what's happening and I tell y'all and, and, and everybody sees this now, they let it go through? Come on, man. Wow. The game is rigged. I don't know who they got playing with my shit, but they playing with my shit. Wow. So y'all see me with the wrench now. Snapbox TV with the wrench. Y'all go subscribe to that backup page because that's where my videos is going to be at. My pre-recorders is going to be there. Because they shadow banned in this page. And they want y'all to believe that my channel was failing. But obviously y'all done seen we had 6,000 people in the building. Three hours into this live, we got 4,700 people in the building. Shit dirty. The game is rigged, man. They doing the same thing to my Instagram. Because it's something that I'm saying they don't want you to hear. And the react 5,000 now is crazy, right? Because when I logged out and came back in, now we jump back up to 5,000 people in the building. How many people are really, really watching us right now? How many people? 5,100, still climbing. Now watch them pull it back down. Watch the numbers. Everybody put 50. So now we went from 5,100 back to 47. Who's behind this YouTube shit? Who's doing that? I purposely went out and came back in of my YouTube because I knew the numbers was going to jump up. So when the numbers jumped up, that it, 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 it glitched it. So when they glitched it, now they start pulling the numbers back out. Who sent you? Is that the CIA? Is the FBI? Who? Michael Spiff, thank you for own sponsoring this war. And look how, yo, it went up to 5,100, started climbing. No, look how many people they snatched out. I love this shit right here. I love when, I, I, oh, you bitch. Bring your ass back over here again, nigga. I'm going to kill you. That fuck, yo, that mosquito, 
That shit is mad long with a long point though. And it was like somebody got a remote control with the motherfucker because I went to hit it. You know, it's easy to kill a mosquito. That shit weaved me and disappeared. Where you at? You the present king, bro. We got to watch over our real, our real life angels. Man, let me tell y'all something, man. I don't even like telling people to drop money in my super chat. I don't. I, I never did that before, but I'm just telling y'all. You got to take care of your soldiers. Niggas sitting up there giving uh, Wallow and Gilly a hundred million dollars to promote these rappers, while I'm sitting up on this platform telling you that these rappers are being used to destroy our children, the same way they destroyed us. I love rap. I love the rap game. I love hip hop. I was birthed in it, but now I'm understanding the same way. You know, last night I went on a drunk rant. Drinking, I ain't even take a swig. That's water. That's straight water inside on um, inside my cup. I ain't even take a swig yet. Nigga, I, niggas felt as much as I like drinking. Nigga felt like shit this morning. Straight shit. So the same things that we in love with is the same shit that's destroying us. Our music has been turned into a weapon against us. Now the crazy part about it is right, which I gotta understand this. The music industry in America, it's over. Watch it. Make sure y'all subscribe. Matter of fact, I'm not going to even get into that. I got certain shit that I'm saving for Snapbox TV. I got certain shit. Shout out to my Patreon. I got certain shit that I'm saving for my Patreon. But they've been fucking with my Patreon. That's why y'all ain't seen no videos up there. They've been flagging my shit, doing all types of shit to my Patreon. They're sabotaging my Patreon. I was having a hard time uploading videos on my Patreon. The live that I did last night, they was flagging it. I couldn't even find my own live on my own YouTube page. I couldn't even find it. So I said, you know what? Let me take it down because something is getting ready to happen. Let me take it down. The game is rigged. And shout out to my people that's fucking with me on Rumble. What happened to Polite? He got seven years in jail. They socked him. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was supposed to take my swag. They socked him. Did I miss you? Yes, mosquito. I ain't never seen a mosquito that hard to catch, man. It ain't shadow banning. What did crack do to the hood? Well, you know what? I'm going to let the cat out of the bag real quick. One of the things that I plan on bringing to my platform, I'm going to be having some of my friends and some of the people from the communities where I grew up at, where you grew up at, tell a story. If you are a child or somebody that was raised or wasn't raised because their parents was affected by the drug game and you want to tell your story, I'm going to give regular people, fuck all that interview with celebrities. I could do that shit. I don't want to. I don't want to. The niggas ain't talking about nothing. They ain't talking about nothing. Ain't nobody paving the way to show us and lead us to a better life. I don't want to talk about them. I want people to make it clear. So these young kids that's out there, that's following the path, that they're going down the path of destruction, I want them to understand that we went through something that some of us is broken because of the drug game. 
The younger kids, the youth, they hate the older generation. They don't understand that we can't connect with them like that because we broken. And we are addicted and attracted to everything that's evil. Interview me, bro. I got a lot of stories from Inglewood. Shout out to Inglewood. It's time for us to educate our children. Educate ourselves. Anyone else can see or hear anything? Just black screen. Oh, wow. I can't really talk about shit like that. But I can say your message is a valid one. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. The mosquito got a, a syringe No, Yeah, this, this, this mosquito don't look normal, man. And for some reason, I can't catch this shit. It's like, this, like it's being controlled. Shit crazy. Fuck 1090 Jake paperwork. We don't give a fuck about 1090 Jake's paperwork. I don't give a fuck about him telling in jail. I don't care. So if you missed out on that part of it, let me say it again. We don't give a fuck about 1090 Jake. Fuck him. We don't give a fuck about 1090 Jake's paperwork. That's stupid shit. That's nigga shit. But what I will touch on is Demi. I will touch on Bimmy. In the streets, if you got doubt, you do it out. It's just that simple. In the streets, if you got doubt, you do it out. And I'm going to say what I said again last, last night, right? To a sense, I agree with Zip with the drip. To a sense, for flipping on Bimmy. And I explained this to Bimmy when I spoke to him. And I'm going to say it again. He flipped on Bimmy. Because you standing next to ten toes down, right? You standing next to ten toes down. Why he disrespecting? Uh, oh, he's he's calling he's calling um zip a rat, right? But at the same time, everybody was mad at me for flipping out on zip because he was fucking with ten toes down. So I was wrong for flipping out on Zip because he was fucking with 10 toes down and went on his platform. If I build your platform up, help you get monetized, promote you and, and send all my subscribers over there to support Zip, and then he ended up on 10, uh, on, on, on 10 toes down platform, niggas got mad at me like, oh, you wild and you bugging. But then when we started beefing, he sat up there and told everybody that he told China Mac to start dissing me and making those diss videos. And told China Mac to flag my channel, which almost got my channel taken away. But to act like I didn't hear that. But nevertheless, those are my rules that I stand by. Now, when I sat up there and I addressed Zip with the drip, right? Zip response to me was, y'all remember when he said, you only meet about seven people that you loyal to in your life? I'm like, what? But y'all, <laughs> Bimmy, you wasn't listening when he said that? Rhonda, thank you for sponsoring this war. You wasn't listening when he said that? He said you only meet seven people that you loyal to in your life. I'm loyal to everybody I meet. I'm just like that. To everybody I meet. But y'all wasn't listening to this snake. You wasn't listening. So you, you reap what you sow. Because the reality of it is, Zip didn't have to go at Bimmy like that. But when he did, his channel was at a standstill. He couldn't break that 10,000 view bound. 
stuck in between 10,000 views, 10,000 views, 10,000 views. He was stuck there. When he went at Bimmy, called him a rat, put the paperwork out that he had for a week or two already, already had, it was strategically planned. Bimmy wasn't paying attention to his circle. He was fucking with Zip. And he was fucking with motherfucking Ten Toes Down at the same time. Not realizing in the streets, a nigga gonna take that shit personal. My friends don't kick it with my enemies. Y'all didn't hear that? Now, when I said that to Zip, y'all said I was bugging. But Zip used my same tactics to flip on Bimmy. And all y'all flipped on Bimmy, y'all flipped on Bimmy. For the same rules that I gave Zip. But Zip sat up there and told y'all, you're only loyal to seven people. But then turned around and treated Bimmy the same way I treated him. And y'all all went crazy for this shit. You disloyal, you motherfuckers. Y'all remind me of 50 Cent coming out and shitting on Ja Rule. Ja Rule was the man, the biggest star. Niggas loved him. And y'all turned y'all back. Y'all remind me of Errol Spence and that fight that he just had. Nigga was in a car accident before. Yo, he, 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 the nigga, like, first of all, a person, most boxers get knocked out, they never the same no more. That car accident knocked that nigga out. Then everybody switched up on him. Started posting up pictures of him looking beat the fuck up laughing at him. Y'all disloyal. you. See, the only difference is, though, my audience that follow me and support me is so big and it's a variety. I got people that watch me just for my animal videos, which I haven't put no animal videos up in a long time, but I'm about to get back to it. These niggas is one dimensional. Let me say that shit again for the streets now. For the streets. Zip is a fucking snake. He's a grimy Queens nigga. Queens is related to Brooklyn. Brooklyn is the grimiest place on this earth. That's why Queens and Brooklyn is similar. And the Bronx and Manhattan is similar. The only difference is the Bronx get busy just like Brooklyn. Not to say Harlem niggas don't get busy. Not to say Queens niggas don't get... Zip is fucking greasy. Because those principles that he applied to on Bimmy, he didn't even believe in that. He told y'all that he didn't believe in those principles when he said you only loyal to seven people. And I said you don't kick... My friends don't kick it with my enemies. Then he used my power, my strategy to flip on Bimmy, his man's. Flipped out on Bimmy. The niggas, yo, the nigga mad cool with Bimmy family. His nephews. He didn't give a fuck. He stabbed Bimmy, he stabbed Bimmy in his fucking back because he wanted them YouTube views to go up. You are the company that you keep. Then I'm sitting up there looking like, yo, these, and I'm going to tell, tell you again, like, Zip on some real shit. These niggas that's acting like they like you that was on YouTube before you, they do not like you. They in fear that you taking their audience. So some of them acting like they align with you. And, they, and then some of them, they ain't. They don't like you. I wasn't jealous of Zip's success on the internet. Nigga, I pushed you. I wanted you to be, when you successful, you showing, you showing how much power I got. Niggas, a bunch of you niggas I made. 050, the movement. Zip with the drip. Let's get to that. Bullets got, he got what, 35,000 people following him? 10 toes down. Nigga, I made all you niggas. Z Banger. Brought my brother, Lord I Kim. Every time I, every time I get on this camera, I'm promoting and pushing my brother, Lord I Kim. What I got to keep going on? How many niggas I got monetized? Some niggas is going to be a one-hit wonder. And then some niggas is going to have a long career like Jay-Z. Nigga, I got seven years in this bitch. And got millions of people watching me. Hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of thousands of people. I get 100,000 views on my videos in a day. In 24 hours. 
You niggas is, is barely breaking 10,000 views and your ego is big. I got a big, you got the dirty section. I got doctors and lawyers watching me. I got rabbis and priests watching me. I got niggas like Mace calling me on the phone. Past tense. Niggas like Takashi, Whack 100, coming to sit down with a nigga. Academics, A-listers. Don't compare me to these niggas. A snake is a fucking snake. And my advice to you, Zip, you better keep your head on a swivel. Because you playing with Bimmy and Bimmy got a lot of money and Bimmy got soldiers. You playing with Bimmy, you made it. Yeah, Bimmy's reputation is mud right now. But the truth of the matter is, you did what you did to Bimmy. You did what you did to Bimmy because you's a snake. You don't even believe in the tactics that you used on him. I'm sorry. You don't. Only seven people in your life you loyal to. Remember that. I said that shit. My friends don't kick it with my enemies. Bimmy didn't dish you. You just basically destroyed Bimmy's legacy because you wanted a YouTube career and you didn't give a fuck about the boundaries or the friends that you cool with. But in the long run, one, th one thing you better understand is Bimmy not going to just let that shit go. He's not. He ain't going to just let that shit go. Shit is bananas. It is what it is. Y'all keep sleeping on Bimmy. Y'all listening to that murder case at the basketball game and shit like that. Now, I'm not saying that Bimmy guilty, but it damn sure sounds like some of them homicides he was behind. Bimmy's not the nigga that touched the trigger. Bimmy is the type of nigga that makes shit happen. Y'all niggas is too stupid to realize that. Prem ain't the nigga that touched the trigger. The, 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 the trigger. Prince is, but Prem wasn't. It stops, like, no disrespect to little Prem, but the streets is grimy. Y'all niggas keep praising these street niggas. Big Supreme put a hit on little Supreme Jr., his mom's. I'm not trying to be disrespectful because I fuck with little Supreme Jr., I don't see how this nigga praising his father when your father tried to get your mother murdered. And when Bimmy said that on Queen's Flip platform, pre called home and they made they made they made this nigga on Queen's Flip take that shit down. Cause that wasn't supposed to come out. So now you niggas are sitting up there talking about Preem don't fuck with Bimmy. Who in they right mind? Who the fuck would ever really want to fuck with Preem after he put a head on his fucking baby mother? Y'all keep glorifying the streets. And I'm looking at all this shit like, huh? No disrespect to Little Preem, but I don't understand how he walking around with a shirt on with his father after his father tried to have his mother murdered. Because she, because he didn't want the little nigga to be born. That shit diabolical. Ain't no loyalty in these streets. The streets got an expiration date. Preem told me, little Preem told me, he really believed that 50 Cent is his brother. And I missed the nigga again. Then you watch the movie Get Rich or Die Trying, what do you see in the movie? 50 Cent insinuating that Prem is his father and Prem is the one that got him shot. So Prem tried to get 50 Cent murdered. T.A. did the interview. Shout out to T.A. So 50 Cent is insinuating in the movie that Prem is really his father 
and his father tried to get him murdered. Bimmy sits on Queen's Flip and breaks down how Preen tried to have Preen Jr. mother murder because he ain't want that bait. Damn, these niggas is diabolical. You Queen's niggas is something else. Yeah, that fly was real. That ain't no fly. That's a mosquito. I think somebody navigating that shit. That's the smartest mosquito I've ever seen in my life. In the movie, I thought it was Fat Cat that was supposed to be the father. In the movie, both of them niggas was fucking her. In the movie, both of the niggas was fucking her. Watch the movie again. I'm just sitting back and I'm watching. I see through a different set of eyes. I see through a different set of eyes. But the reality of it is, I got to agree to a sense, just a little bit, with Zip. But at the same time, I got to point out his hypocrisy because what he's practicing, he don't even believe in. He told y'all that it was all good when he was fucking with 10 toes down. You only got seven niggas that you loyal to. Now, when I look at this TV screen, I'm sitting up there watching the same people, the audience that I gave him, putting super chat and his shit paying the nigga. But then he used my tactics that he don't believe in to destroy Bimmy. And then you stupid motherfuckers that's in the audience, y'all really comparing him to Bimmy when you can. Him and Bimmy living on two different levels. Bimmy, Bimmy ass is on jets going to different islands. <laughs> Bimmy is sitting at corporate tables with millionaires and billionaires. Zip with the drip is sitting in his living room on that dusty ass fucking couch. I got a question. Do we got a flat screen TV or do we got a black and white TV to match that ugly ass fucking furniture? Inquiring minds just want to know. I mean, I heard the slick shit. He ain't really squashed the beef. So if we, if we, if we still at it, my whole thing is like I said before, I ain't want to go back and forth with him. I made it clear and I took all those videos down. I ain't want to go back and forth with Zip. I told him, my man's trouble told the nigga on the phone, we going to meet up. We gonna meet up, and we gonna get it on. Nah, I ain't meeting up. I ain't fighting. That's what he said. I ain't fighting. So Trump said, "So you gonna give him what he really want? Poppy's a shooter. You ain't ready for him, nigga. We was never supposed to be beefing on the internet. Being that the beef ain't squashed, nigga. I don't want to make no videos. But I ain't gonna even fuck with you, cause in due time, I guarantee you, Bimmy gonna send some shooters at you. I spoke to Bimmy. He didn't say that, but he gonna send some shoot, cause niggas love Bimmy." You better keep your head on a swivel. You better keep your head on a swivel and hope to God that you don't get caught with the same gun your brother got caught with. Because now you can't even go outside without it. You be a fool. Guess you better stay in the house and make your bread, my nigga. Don't compare me to a nigga. Please don't. My niggas that came home, Trouble, T-Mac, all my niggas that come home from jail, my niggas don't do 20 years in jail. Trouble did 18 years in jail. He got more time, or rather he gave back some of the time because he caught a body in jail, right? He did 18 years in jail. My son ain't running around robbing nobody. How the fuck you on the internet getting super chat and your brother in jail for robbery? Don't compare me to no nigga like that. I take care of all the niggas around me. When y'all be hitting me up with super chat or when I was getting money off of my videos before I got demonetized, my stash could have been all the way up. I take care of all the niggas around me. My niggas don't got to go outside and do no bum shit. Niggas are going on 50 years old doing robberies. Don't compare me to no shit like that. I raise the children. I don't try to fuck them.
The shit is sad. Whole fucking family dysfunctional. Mother in jail. Father in jail. Uncle in jail. Dumbass fucking brother just went back to jail. Look at that motherfucker. Got him. Got him! I should have set you on fire. That's how much I hate you. Look. Yeah. That's how much I hate you. That's what you get for fucking with me. Nigga. You got roaches. I ain't no fucking roaches in my house, nigga. You stupid. I ain't got no goddamn roaches, nigga. You sound stupid. That was a mosquito I just killed. The same mosquito that's been sitting up here messing with me for hours. We all should be on war timing in the hood, man. We got to cleanse the earth of our own people. In order for us to elevate in life, we got to take out our own trash. You can't keep the garbage in your house. You can't keep the garbage in your house. It's like, damn, y'all sit up there. Y'all made fun of me for years. Oh, this nigga don't never get off his couch. This nice leather couch. Nice leather bench. Oh, this nigga don't get off his couch. But you praise this bum ass nigga for sitting on that dirty ass couch? Who sent you? So I sit up there and I deck my house out. Don't compare me to these niggas, man. A little mess in here. I'm kind of like pissed off. It's a little messy, but y'all get the picture. Let me move the computer chair, right? Move the chair out the way for a second. Right? See, when you walk in, y'all notice, right? See what's that on the floor? That's the prayer rug. Oh, it's another mosquito? Come on, man. I don't know why these folded clothes are sitting in here. They shouldn't be in here. But y'all see it. Xbox. I ain't this Xbox been sitting here forever. Y'all see it. Don't compare me. Don't compare me. Like I'm a real I'm a I'm a real real man. not compare me
Don't compare me to these dudes, man. The fuck? Why my table not on? My table ain't come on. Don't compare me to them, man. Stop. Cleveland to the Bronx. Don't compare me to them, man. Don't. Don't never compare me to a nigga that just wants to smoke weed, man. Don't compare me to these niggas, man. I'm here on a mission. And at the same time a nigga on a mission, I take care of my responsibility, man. Nigga ain't even take care of his brother. Bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm showing people what a man is supposed to fucking do. Cause that's what men are supposed to do. Y'all watching niggas on the internet that's sitting up there misleading the fucking children. I'm showing you what a man is supposed to do. Shut the hell up. Got my dragons in there. They hiding. I'm just saying, man. Shit sound like the wilderness, right? Yeah, I got a fish tank. What's up with Bimmy? He be all right. Cause see the whole thing about it is right. What y'all gotta realize is that yeah, that shit, that noise is, a, is, a, is annoying me. Go back in the house. That shit is annoying. Besides the motherfucking mosquitoes is acting stupid. Them shit's waging war on me. Are you serious? That motherfucker locked me up.
Here we go. Why does it? I just explain. I just explained why Zip went at him. He went at him because he cooled with ten toes down. You got to watch the company that you keep. It's, but it's a lesson in this glass bottle. Because it's like I told Bimmy. The only thing I agree with with Zip is the fact that you put a stamp of approval on ten toes down. My friends don't kick you with my enemies. So in order to, to, to discredit Ten Toes Down, he destroyed Zip, he destroyed Bimmy's image. In the process of destroying Bimmy's image, he got him a couple of thousand new subscribers. Probably made a couple of dollars off of his lives. His, his, his stacks went up a little, little bit. He's still a little nigga though. Because what y'all got to understand when you're watching YouTube, man, there's so many big YouTubers, so many big niggas that's getting millions of views every every single day, making forty and fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars off of YouTube a month. A month. He's a small fry. He's a small fry. You're never gonna make it, but so far with those kind of conversations that the niggas having on that couch, he gonna have to step his shit up. You're never gonna make it that far. How can you destroy something that's solid? See, here's the truth of the matter, matter right? That I need y'all to understand. The streets is over with. Right? So Bimmy might feel some type of way because he came at his, his, his street reputation, but who's in the streets? Zip not even in the streets no more. He ain't in no fucking streets. He's on the internet. He ain't no street nigga no more. He's a YouTuber. He trying to sell you that image because he went to jail. He don't want to go back. That man don't want to go back to jail because he was tested too many times in jail. And damn near lost every battle he had in jail. The majority of them. But listening to them niggas argue in the dirty section yesterday, it was like, wow. It was like, wow. They started exposing each other's dirty secrets. This one got touched by that one. That one got touched by this one. This one got ran out of that jail. This one that got ran out of that. That shit was disgusting. It was disgusting. The streets is over with. The rap game is over with. Look at all the street niggas coming to YouTube. When this next wave of COVID hit and they start the next wave of lockdowns, when this next wave of COVID hit, watch how many rappers become YouTubers. Look at how many uh, how many rappers, right? They're not going to tell you, yo, we got to get prepared for the shutdowns. We got to get prepared for the things that's, 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 that's to come. They're not going to do that. They're switching over from the rap game to be a part. You got Mano. He started Kitchen Talk. That shit flopped. So now he's with Angela Yee. You got Cameron and Mace. They they, they you now. got a $30 million check. You know why? Now what they're doing is, all right, they're getting pushed out of hip-hop, so now they're going to get into the, the, the social media. They, 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 they niggas is YouTubers now. Who the fuck you think influenced all these niggas? You think they wasn't watching? Come on, man.
Ain't nothing left in the streets no more. Niggas talk that gangster shit and they raps, but don't nobody want to go to jail. Don't nobody want to die. Everybody ain't stupid like K-Flock. He was a little stupid nigga. That actually was on his way to make it out of the hood and he threw it all away so niggas could call him tough. Stupid. And all of the older niggas around that stupid nigga was stupid niggas. Stupid. Threw his whole life away. For the set. For the block. For the image. For the rap. Stupid. The sad part about it is, right, when all that shit happened with Hurry up, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make your cereal. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pour it. Hey. When all that shit happened with George Floyd and, 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 and those marches and those protests and those riots, like, y'all gotta understand something, man. You were tested to see when it was time to fight how you would fight. When that George Floyd shit happened, you were tested to see how would you fight when it was time to fight. And guess what? You didn't know how to fight. The first thing you did was destroy, destroy the stores just where you get your supplies from in your community. You destroyed the stores in your community. Why do you think my voice is so valuable? You didn't know how to fight. That's why these people that's controlling the world, they're laughing at you. Because all they got to do is send an agitator in your community to throw a brick through a window. Then the whole crowd starts following the nigga that threw the brick. And just destroyed your community. Like the shit that was done in the Bronx was disgusting. But notice that shit didn't go on in Harlem. They wasn't having that. You wasn't doing that in Harlem. They wasn't having that. But in the Bronx, it was World War III over a crackhead. You don't know how to fight. When that dollar bill disappeared, you're going to see hell on earth. When, you, when that dollar bill disappear, watch how the crime rate goes up. When that dollar bill dip from the streets, the safest place to be is probably going to be inside your home. Maybe or maybe not. Because our people are broken so bad. It's like I told y'all. When that shit happened, when the levees broke in New Orleans, Haiti got hit with the earthquake. Hawaii got hit with the fires. New Orleans got hit with the water coming from the own levees. There was no power for months, but niggas was breaking in Walmart, stealing TVs. Didn't have nowhere to plug the TV up, but was stealing TVs while they was going through doomsday. Welcome to Black America. It is what it is. Four million views, Haas, King Kong, and got shit. <laughs> well, I was wondering why people are trying to be at each other's throat or literally at the end of the world. Is every man for himself right now. 
They got laws in the play that stops you from protecting yourself. And the minute that you you you, you wave the the red flag, see how these people work, right? There's laws where they have to leak information to tell on themselves. So they do. And sometimes they will allow certain people like me to say certain things because they got that they have the knowledge has to be put out there. That's how you know about projects like Project Blue Bean. They have to leak it out. Those are the rules. They have to leak this information out. It's not, it's, it's, this shit ain't top secret. They purposely put it out there. You have to know. That's why the Simpsons predict, yo, when you sit back and you watch the Simpsons, they predicted the fires in Hawaii. And in the cartoon, it shows you everything that had blue in the fucking cartoon didn't burn. Now, when they show you the pictures of what happened in Hawaii, everything that was in blue didn't burn. You better ask, yo, y'all don't even understand how this world is scripted and everybody is acting. Even the transvestite that got hit in the face with the brick. Everything is an act. Y'all not even realizing what y'all seeing. You can't believe shit that you see anymore. The world is a stage filled with actors. This shit is like the movie The Titanic. As the boat is sinking... The mothers are singing nursery rhymes to they kill their children while the people are getting ready to die. They done gave you some sleepy time tea with some arsenic in it. We as a people, you are sitting where are these mosquitoes coming from. You are in a pot, a pot. You are literally, we are in a pot. With boiling water. We are boiling. We are in a pot with boiling water. You're cooking. You want to slow cook. The fire is down low. Constantly boiling. I mean burning. DC Cole, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Nah, I ain't leaving no damn door open. I don't believe I sat my fat ass here before I was talking to y'all. Yo, Haas, what are people supposed to do to survive World War Three? That's a hard question. It's a good question, but it's a hard question to answer when we're not prepared for harp. We're not prepared for CERN. The fish in the ocean where we're supposed to go fishing are jumping out of the ocean because something is wrong with the water. You got lands where trains are derailing and toxic waste is falling into the earth. Then you got laws that basically say if parts of the earth is condemned, then they can evacuate you and keep you from going in those parts of the lands. So if you a homeowner and you living in lands that's contaminated or by law, how that shit happened or Hawaii, they can take the lands from you. So now you have to figure out how to escape hurricanes, how to escape earthquakes. You have to figure out how to escape volcanoes. You have to figure out how to escape nuclear missiles, nuclear bombs. You have to figure out how to escape little Ray Ray and little Mike Mike. 
You have to figure out how to escape these fucking gangs. You have to figure out how to escape the drug dealers. You have to figure out how to get the fluoride out of the fucking water that you're drinking. You got to figure out how to get the barium out of your lungs that you're breathing in the air that's putting metals in your body. You got to figure out how to, ex it, it, how to escape this frequency, this microwave that they turned on. That now when they turn it on again, instead of it just, co yo, it's cooking you. It's cooking your home. It's cooking your car, but it's leaving the trees alone. We got a lot of shit to figure out. And constantly I'm trying to figure this out. You have to figure out how to get around these satellites. Picture yourself saying, you know what? Fuck this world. I'm going back to the woods. Fuck this world. I'm going to go back to the woods. So you go back to the woods, right? When you get to the woods, they decide to throw some laser beams. Next thing you know, now there's a fire that circle you in, in the forest. So all the trees is around, burns, and the smoke, if the, if, the, if the fire don't kill you, the smoke will. By the time the fire get to you, because now you can't escape because they burnt the circle around you and they closed you in. There was a time where I would have said, you know what, it's time for us to go back to the wilderness. Y'all realize for the last 20 years, I was paying attention. Well, within the last 10 years, the tornadoes and the storms was getting worse and worse. In certain places, you'll be in your house. Places that never got tornadoes before was getting hit with tornadoes, wiping houses out. Then FEMA comes in and these billionaires come in. Now they claim this land where all these houses that got wiped out where people owned their property. Now they're buying this land. Some of these people are not even alive no more to claim their land. And other people can't afford to rebuild. So now they can take the land from you because you only own the house. Most people own the house, but you don't own the land. Now it's time for us to get back to getting land. You got niggas like Bill Gates running around buying up all the land. You got China. China owns America. America's in debt to China. Now, ask yourself a question. If the dollar bill ain't worth shit no more, what does China really own in America? You, soldier boy, your birth certificate. When you look at your ID, your name is in capital letters because you have been incorporated. They own you. The dollar bill ain't worth shit. You are. If every person on this earth decided, you know what, we don't even want to live on this earth no more. We're going to commit suicide. The Illuminati loses. There's nobody to control. Marcelino, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. It's all about power. It's all about your soul. Do your best not to die in a state of ignorance. Some people believe in heaven and hell. Some people don't. But there is an afterlife. Your body is a shell. Your soul moves on. When you die, you want to make sure that your soul is illuminated. They keep giving you the most evilest things in the world. They keep your mind at a your, your mind at a lower state. They want to keep you at a lower vibration. Just think about it, right? If they push the doomsday button right now, let's keep it real. Especially in a hood where we celebrate the worst shit. We eat the worst shit. We live the worst type of ways and we got the worst type of fucking mindset. Just imagine. If the evil ones push that doomsday button right now and a hundred thousand people die, 
How many people's souls is ready to make it to paradise? Let's just say heaven and hell ain't even real. When you go to the next dimension, how many people's light you can't borrow or for somebody else's light in the afterworld in the next dimension. The light comes from within inside you. You are not activating your light. They're keeping you in a mental state of darkness. The battle is really for your soul. Why you think when you get into Hollywood and you get in that music industry, you signing your soul over? Why you think all these rappers sitting up there saying they songs? Eminem, I sold my soul. Uh, Snoop Dogg, murder was the case that they gave me. That song, that whole song was dedicated to him making a contract with Satan. Telling you how he was on his deathbed and, 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 and the devil told him to hand over his soul. Murder was the case that they gave me. As I look up at the sky, my mind starts tripping, a tear drops my eye, my body temperature fall. I'm shaking and they breaking, trying to save the dog. Listen to that song. Listen to what he's saying. Y'all don't even understand the game that's being played. You don't have to believe in Satan, but Satan believes in you. The people in power are being controlled by the jinn. The people in power are being controlled by the jinn, the unseen, the shapeshifters. Aliens, it's the jinn you better worry about. The shit that they don't teach you. Gilly and Wallow ain't gonna never have this conversation about you, about this. That niggas ain't even know Gilly was Muslim. ain't even know he Muslim. Nothing about his character says that he's Muslim. Let me give you a million dollars worth of games. Million dollars worth dude, that's not game. Dude, that, that shit is elementary ignorant shit. gives a fuck about bullets got that nigga still live with his grandmother in his 30s don't tell me nothing about no dusty ass nobody give a fuck about bullets got he bullets got he got about 35 creeping up on 40,000 subscribers and nobody watches him bullet got he should feel like shit he was on a winning team now he look like a fucking loser that clubhouse app is where 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 it's like, it's the graveyard. YouTube is the big stage. He went backwards. We just spoke on Ben Bada. Go back to the beginning of this video. Bullets got to ain't buy his subs. I help him build his platform. I'll give him that. He didn't buy those subs. And one thing you better understand about YouTube, YouTube don't play that shit. It doesn't work like that when you just go buy subs on YouTube. And, and that, when YouTube catch you, they'll, they'll take your channel. YouTube will take your whole channel behind that. They will take your monetization behind that. Nigga said, yo, Haas, let me hold a dollar so I can feed my six stepkids. Boy, oh, are you eating more cereal? Go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. You're supposed to be sleeping and ready for school. Oh, you gonna finish the whole box of what you gonna eat in the morning?
anytime. Discussion is fire. Cookie crisp at midnight. Boy, better take his ass to bed. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm not doing five hours tonight. I'll see y'all tomorrow. We out.